Giants won the toss. Elected to defer. T.J. Logan is back deep for the Bucks. Aldrich Rosas will get things started. Giants and Buccaneers underway in Tampa. Bucks will start from their 25-yard line as Jameis Winston leads the Tampa Bay offense onto the field. Well, Kenny, I think it's safe to say that Jameis Winston has had a little bit of an up-and-down start to the 2019 season. I think last week in Carolina on that short week, really, on Thursday, he was helped tremendously by a commitment to the running game. And I got to expect that either Peyton Barber or Ronald Jones are going to be a big part of today's game plan as well. Buccaneers lost to the Niners here, and then a big win on a Thursday night over the Panthers in Charlotte. Peyton Barber in the backfield, two Barbers up in the booth, two tight end set for the Bucs as Winston hands it off to Barber, and he spins out across the 30 to the 32-yard line, finally brought down by the rookie out of Wisconsin, Ryan Connolly, after a gain of seven. Well, I think it would be remiss not to mention Mike Evans on this offense. He's yet really to get a start to the season. He's had some downfield completions, but I got to imagine, too, that he's going to be a big part of this game plan. Do not be shocked if Tampa comes out and tries to take a shot at him early. Only six receptions for Evans over the first two games. Bottom of your screen. Second down at three. Off the fake to Barber. Winston to Evans. There he is, Rodney, at a penalty marker as the catch is made by Mike Evans at midfield for a gain of 18. Bill Vinovich, now a referee today. The run I asked Bruce Arians, head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if Mike Evans was frustrated by Chris Godwin's expansion. He said no. Prior to the pass, illegal contact. Defense number 27. Penalty declined. Result of the play, first down. Well, here's the penalty first, T. Look, it's the, other, it's the other side of the ball, and I remember in my playing days, they wouldn't even bother throwing this flag, but that's clearly the contact where the flag was. And, and to your point about Mike Evans, he is the ultimate team player. I remember in the preseason him talking about the potential emergence of Chris Godwin. You know what he's going to be in the offense. I think the both of them, though, are very, very dangerous together. DeAndre Baker, the penalty. Evans on the sideline. Winston wrapped up, and down he goes. Back at the 44-yard line, Marcus Golden, along with Alec Ogletree. One of the things that defensive coordinator James Betcher told us that he wanted to do, get these guys off schedule, change the math. And it's just a miscommunication up front. You see DeMar Dotson, the right tackle, look inside, and then there's just a stun off the edge. It's an easy sack for Golden and Alec Ogletree to get Jameis Winston on the ground. Golden played for Bruce Arians in Arizona. 12 and a half sacks back in 2016 for the Cards. And he's quite a talent. He's had a knee injury a couple of years ago. He hasn't probably gotten 100% recovered from that yet. Loss of six. Now second and 16 as Winston throws. And back on the field, it's Evans who makes the catch at the 42-yard line. So a third down and two coming up for the Bucks. When you look at this Giants defense, they, they've struggled. You, you live in the market. You know the... The conversation about on the back end, they're young. They're going to need Alec Ogletree to step up and be a leader. Yes, he makes a lot of tackles, yet, but he's going to need to be involved in this pass defense. Bucks are going to use a lot of play action today because of their already setting up the run game. Third down and two from the 42-yard line as the Bucks empty the backfield. Winston on third down. Wants to take off, and he has stopped short. Lorenzo Carter with the initial pressure and then help from Ogletree. Well, Lorenzo Carter is right here in the screen, and it's, look, there's nowhere to throw this football. They give the impression of pressure with five guys at the line of scrimmage. They drop, so there's nowhere for Jameis Winston to get rid of the ball. He did try to force it, but it looks to me, looks to me, Kenny, like, Bruce Arians is going to take a shot here, and if you're the Giants' defense, hard count. Fourth and short. 
Winston hands it off to Barber, and he picks up a first down. Peyton Barber for the Giants' 37-yard line. Well, they've had success running a football of late, guys, because of that play of the offensive line on the left side. Ali Marpet, Jensen, even to a degree, Donovan Smith, the big guys up front on the left side of the offensive line have really been positive in the run game, and I think that gives coordinator Byron left which confidence to go for short yardage plays. I think we'll see more and more of that as this day goes on. Smith and Marpet, both New York natives. On the toss, it's Brashard Perryman, and Perryman will pick up the first down. The veteran wideout takes it inside the 25-yard line for a gain of 13. Yeah, the thing you see here is creativity by Myron Leftwich here. You can see the, the toss comes back around. He, he fake it out to Barber on the right side. And Perriman, the most important thing that he did here was he accelerated through potential contact. That's the one way you break big tackles and make big plays. You accelerate through contact. Buck started this drive at their own 25. Now at the Giants' 25-yard line. New set of downs. Up the middle, Barber found a hole down to the 21-yard line for a gain of four. You know, the one thing when we talked to defensive coordinator James Betcher, Ronde, he said, we got to figure out where to bring our fifth guy, our fifth pressure player from. And you've seen him mix this up a little bit in this drive to varying degrees of success. Though. Well, I think you do that because you're trying to throw him off balance, obviously. But, but look, they, they do not create a lot of pressure inside. Those big guys in, 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 with Dalvin Tomlinson and B.J. Hill and rookie Lawrence, they, they're not pass rushers. They're more run stoppers. So got to be able to vary the guys on the edge, 59-44 and the linebackers. Winston on second and six. He throws to the end zone, and it is off the hands of the intended receiver, the tight end, O.J. Howard. And this is another guy that has gotten off to a very slow start. If you got him in fantasy, you're wondering, when is he going to get one of those productive days? To me, he's one of the most uncoverable tight ends in the league because of his size. He just quite hasn't found that rhythm in this offense yet, but you've got to expect that they are going to try to get him involved early. They mentioned it to us. The Giants also mentioned it to us yesterday. Well, if you're going to put a ISO on some real preppers like that from a defensive standpoint, you've got to go to him. There's Byron Leftwich, the longtime NFL quarterback, now calling plays, the offensive coordinator. Third down and six. Winston, end zone. Evans, touchdown. What a throw. And what a terrific adjustment by Mike Evans to get this ball. If you're going to live by the gun, you're going to die by the gun in the NFL. They bring all-out pressure, and that leaves Mike Evans one-on-one -on -one with Janoris Jenkins. And, and I love this the way this pass is weighted. He threw it up, let Mike Evans time to run underneath it. Jameis is going to take a shot here. But you see how confident and poised he's in the pocket that his matchup is better than their matchup. Nice drive, first touchdown for Tampa Bay. Tell you what, Rondé, you know this from having played both corner and safety. Jack Rabbit, Janoris Jenkins was in no man's land back there. When you're off the ball six, seven yards, you got a receiver screaming down your throat, zero pressure coming at you, you have no chance. You, he could have easily went to the post and had the same throw. Here's the rookie out of Utah, Matt Gay. About to attempt the extra point. Bucks reach the end zone on their opening possession. And the extra point is no good. Wide to the left. Ten plays, 75 yards, and the 24th career touchdown connection from Winston to Evans that matches a Bucks franchise record. Josh Freeman, Mike Williams, 24 as well. Corey Ballantyne is back deep for the Giants. Giants will start at the 25 as the rookie out of Duke, first round draft pick Daniel Jones leads the New York offense onto the field, his first start in the NFL. Well, the narrative around Daniel Jones is that he is much more mobile quarterback than Eli Manning. Eli was not playing poorly. He just wasn't inspiring the offense. You insert a young quarterback, you have a very young and extremely talented tailback. It should galvanize this unit. Let's see if they're able to come out and make hay with their running back and try to take some pressure off this young quarterback. 
Eli started 232 of the last 233 games for the Giants. Barkley lined up to the left of Jones. First and 10, 25-yard line. As Jones throws, it's complete. Evan Engram, first down and more. Came into this game as the fourth leading receiver in the National Football League over the first two weeks, and Ingram picks up 18. Yeah, you know, uh, Daniel Jones needs to get easy throws early. You get a crossing right. Jordan Whitehead is way deep off of this by necessity uh, because of the action that's happening in front of him, and Evan Ingram is one of the best young tight ends in the National Football League, essentially, Rondé, a wide receiver. He is a wide receiver. Looks like one, runs like one, catches like one. Good play for Daniel Jones' first completion of his career. As a starter, three of four in Dallas two weeks ago in relief. As Barkley gets swallowed up. Well, you look at this Giants offense, no coincidence that we were going to be talking about Evan Ingram. The Bucks have struggled covering tight ends this year. This year, Last week against Carolina, Greg Olson went to town on him. And yes, it's a little bit of the coverage of Jordan Whitehead, but also the linebackers, Levante, David, and Kevin Minter in there today are going to have their hands full. With that very, as you said, to the athletic tight end. In the Top of your screen, 87. Sterling Shepard missed last week's game against Buffalo due to a concussion. He returns this afternoon as Jones swings it out to Barkley. And Saquon Barkley gains a couple out of bounds at the 40. Four yard line, so a third down and long coming up for the Giants. Well, we must talk about Shaq Barrett. If not just because he had three sacks last week, is because of the energy that he brings an outside rusher. No JPPs, still on the physically unable to perform list. They haven't activated him. They've been looking all summer for a guy that can rush the edge. And last week, he had huge returns against the left tackle for Carolina. This matchup for him today against Nate Solder, he premium one for the Bucks defense and this Giants offense. Third down and nine. Giants must get to the Tampa Bay 47 for a first down. Jones looking to throw. And it's complete for a first down. Stolen Shepard. Knocked out of bounds at the Buccaneers 30-yard line. 21 yards from Jones to Shepard. Well, a back-to-back -back plays here, guys. You're going to see Shaq Barrett get double teamed. Two guys going to pay attention to him. And you see the running back come over, stake one, and, and give a little chip. But the, the action is inside. Sterling Shepard, to me, is one of the premier slot players in the NFL. He can play outside, yes, but he does his most damage inside. Three wide receivers set from the Buccaneers. 30. Barkley flips it back. And not much. And Shepard is out of bounds at the 28. Picks up just two. Well, Pat Shermer saw the Bucks run a little bit. <laughs> Flip reverse. Hey, we can we can have that in our offense too. You're going to run it again to to less promising results. But, but this offense, we talked about it being more variable with Dan Jones at quarterback. Yeah. I think there's a sense that they'll see it differently. Eli and Daniel Jones today. I got to tell you, if you're going to run the ball, put it in 26's hands. Bunch formation to the right. 26 lined up to the left of Jones. And he does put it in his hands on second down. Gate of two to the Tampa Bay 26. And by the way, I don't disagree with you, Tiki, but look, when you look at the interior of this Bucks defensive line, and Dominic and Sue comes in, Vita Vea has been a stud so far. Yeah. And Will Golston, who's the unhurt, unheralded one, has formed a stout inside do. It's hard to run that inside zone that New York likes to run, so you're gonna see some creativity in this offense today. Giants have scored a touchdown on their opening drive in each of their first two games. Now facing a third down and six. Play clock winding down. Jones sets on third down. What a catch! Evan Ingram makes the catch. And he is close. To a Giants first down. Well, they're giving so much respect to Evan Ingram as a tight end that they're putting their nickel back. Number 36 on him in coverage, but there is absolutely nothing you could do to defend that. Who needs Odell Beckham Jr.? Right. <laughs> Learned some lessons from OBJ. Yeah, he, he definitely picks up did. A Giants first down. Yeah, that was fantastic. You know, you, you talk, go back to Saquon for a second here. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, it's going to be really hard because they're so thick inside here on the Tampa Bay front seven. 
If you're the Giants, you want to run to the edges with Saquon. Play clock is at one. Giants get the snap away. Looking to run up the middle and wrapped up by Vita Vea. We had Vita Vea in our meeting on Friday. And I forget just how large of a human being he is. It doesn't matter who he's against. He will fight through double teams, pushing Jalapeo back. And the one thing you notice about Vita, he never finishes a play with a guy on him. He's, he's always unblocked at the end of plays. Hard to run the football in there. Loss of one, second down at 11. As Jones throws near side. Complete at the 17-yard line to Barkley. Levante David makes the stop. With under five minutes remaining in the first quarter, opening possession for the Giants. I got to tell you, one thing that we're noticing from this Giants offense, it feels different. The rhythm is much more uh, on pace, and even though we're, they're not getting a ton of positive plays in the run, they're sticking to it to keep them honest, and it's given Daniel Jones a lot of time in the pocket. You remember the one thing Giants fans always complain about, the O-line doesn't protect the quarterback, but Daniel Jones looks pretty cool back there. A much improved Giants offensive line this season, third down and eight. Giants must get to the 10 for a first down. And that's the first incompletion. Kevin Minter played the hit. Well, there hasn't been a much better red zone defense this to start this season than Tampa Bay. They get down here, they're either going to bring you bring pressure or give you the illusion of pressure and drop back in coverage. And Daniel Jones thought this was man-to-man -man for some reason because his receiver, Russell Shepard, is still running right into a Defender Kevin Minter causes the incompletion in the field goal attempt here by New York. Rosas 36 yard attempt. Uh, Rondé mentioned the red zone defense. Bucks have not allowed a red zone touchdown. Seven possessions for their opponents. The kick is good. So the Giants score on their opening possession. First three weeks of the season. 6 3, Tampa Bay. Welcome back, guys. You can't spell Daniel without Eli. <laughs> I like that one, Kenny. The similarities between the two quarterbacks are uncanny. We sat down with Daniel Jones yesterday. The mannerisms, the voice inflection. I got to tell you, Kenny, I'm sitting in that production meeting, and I'm just chuckling to myself because I said, You're, this is Eli from 15 years ago. It's amazing how similar they are. And you were there, Tiki. Remember that giant squad when Manning... Made his first start back in November of 2004. Daniel Jones led an 11 play field goal drive, and it was Mike Evans the key for the Bucks on their first possession. Well, we had an inclination that Mike Evans was going to be heavily involved, and I think Mike Evans is the type of receiver that needs to get involved early. Week one against San Francisco, he came in, he was sick. He wasn't feeling well. He was out after two or three plays and just wasn't himself. Saw the emergence of Chris Godwin in the slot and some of the plays he made last week at Carolina. But it, what that does, it puts an, em an emphasis away from Mike Evans, who to me is one of the most dominant young receivers in the NFL. Evans, bottom of your screen, Ronald Jones in the backfield. First and 10, 25 yard line, first carry for Jones today, and he goes nowhere as we head to Los Angeles for a game break. And check in with Carissa Thompson. Carissa. Thank you so much, Kenny. So Cardinals opening drive. Kyler Murray connects with Larry Fitzgerald for this one yard score. Cardinals up in this one, 7 0. Kenny? All right, thanks, Carissa. Panthers coming off the loss to the Bucks two Thursdays ago. Hey! That's what Winston on second and ten sets up the screen. It's Jones, and he will pick up a first down and much more inside the Giants 40. And finally brought down at the 35 yard line, a 40 yard pickup by Jones. Now the Bucks from a year ago or two years ago were one of the worst screen teams in football. They have gotten so much better at it, and it comes down to the patience of the operation. Jameis Winston has to let that pressure come, and then his running back just has to sit in the flat and wait for these big boys to get out in front. And then Ronald Jones has shown this this year, the explosion, the acceleration, the ability to run through tackles. Got a huge play, first start of this drive. Winston has completed four of his first five attempts. Now hands it off to Jones. He takes it inside the 30 to the 29. The second year back, Tiki out of USC. Yeah, Ronald Jones has a great jump cut ability. And the way that they deploy these two guys is interesting. Game one, it was all Ronald Jones. Game two, it was all Peyton Barber. When you have a one-two combination like that, 
two guys who can basically be interchangeable. It gives you so much more flexibility as a play caller, as I'm sure Byron Leftwich is really appreciated. You just saw that graphic, Teak, the balance of this offense as well. Run pass, run pass. Last week is the first time that I can remember that they had more runs than passes in the entirety of a football game. Empty backfield, second and five. Winston with time, throws far side, out of bounds. Away from Evans. Third and five upcoming for Jameis Winston and the Bucks. A part of the field here where Byron Leftwich can really do anything inside. This is where Chris Godwin has to come to life. And if you're the Giants defense, puts a lot of pressure on that slot corner, number 34, Grant Haley. And when you go into a game and you're looking at third down cutups, and about 60% of the passes are going number 12, that's where your emphasis should be. Empty backfield once again. Bucks must get to the 24 yard line for a first down on the slant. The catch is made by Perriman. Nice grab. Yeah, great catch. And a first down for Tampa Bay. Just a quick little slant. You see Chris Godwin inside is getting the attention. This is a fantastic catch outside of the frame of the body. Those are so difficult. Rashad Perriman was brought in here to bring a speed element to this game. But he held on to that one. One minute, 46 seconds. I never ran during the play. Perriman, the former Raven and Brown, targeted four times in the Bucks last game. No receptions, but off to a good start here today. Yeah, I tell you, when you get a ball that's bad like that, it's not really a bad ball because it was a good ball, but it was a bad anticipation of that ball. Great adjustment is by it, Perriman. Is there. there such a thing as a bad reception? No, not at all. <laughs> Says the man who was second on the Giants all-time list behind the body tumor. <laughs> There's Jones. Jones to the 21. Alec Global tree in on the tackle. This is one of the few run plays that we've seen where the Giants have had to bring pressure. This is where I think Coach Betcher is getting in a little bit of trouble. He's got to bring pressure to both stop the run and get some heat on Jameis Winston, which leaves them vulnerable in so many different ways. We saw it on the screen a few plays ago. We also saw it on the touchdown pass on their first drive. Three receivers set up to the left side. Second down and eight. Winston over the middle, caught, and taken down to the three of the line of the Giants by O.J. Howard. But well, when you put those three receivers on the left side, like Tiki mentioned earlier, you get an isolation on the backside. And to real prepper, Peppers, he's a good football player, but he is no match for O.J. Howard. And again, the, the catch radius, the size to block out defenders is awesome. On first and goal from the three, Winston to the end zone looking for Evans. And I think that was just a throwaway. The pass was meant to go to the flat real quick to Ronald Jones, but good pressure in Jameis Winston's face. He had to redirect and change his decision. The smart thing he did there was put it out of the end zone where nobody could get this. And you know, Jameis over the years has had a propensity, I guess, to, to that make bad decisions down here and ultimately take points off the board. He wants to be a hero. Yeah, you, absolutely he does. And, and when you're in scoring position, you, you know this better than anybody. You played on this side of the ball. Points is all that matters. So you've got to be smart with the football. Second and goal. Jones in the backfield. Winston, quick release. Yeah. Taking it in for his second touchdown in this first quarter is by Kevins. Oh, Tiki, you said it was stealing. That's exactly what it was. This play is a tenet of a Bruce Arians offense. They just want two guys in a stack, and they know that these two guys can't cover them in man-to-man. -man. Just pick up and throw it. Easy. Stealing ain't the word. That's that's just a gift. Yeah, that's like seven on seven. I got to tell you, Rondé, it's, it's similar, not the same, but similar to his first touchdown. You get a cornerback that has to play off because of the circumstances of the defense defensive scheme. Mike Evans is a free ride. Game missed his first extra point attempt, and this one gets blocked. 0 for 2. Mike Evans, two touchdowns in the first quarter, but two missed extra points. Dexter Lawrence got a hand on it. Two touchdowns for the Bucks. Both from Winston to Mike Evans. Oh, he's been the difference. 
today and you're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense right now. You are feeling your number one receiver. He looks confident, obviously healthy. This quarterback has found his main man today. Two missed extra points, so it's a 12-3 game. Kick off into the end zone. Giants will start at the 25. Second series for Daniel Jones and the New York offense. Four for five. 53 yards on their first possession, which culminated with a 36-yard field goal. Yeah, he moved the ball down the field really effectively in a variety of different types of play calls. I think benefited him. But we're seeing here now why this Giants offense has gotten stuck passing the ball so much in these first couple of games. Their defense can't get off the field, which puts too much pressure on the offense, regardless of who the quarterback is. Two 75-yard drives by the Bucks in this first quarter. Off the play fake to Barkley. Jones hits Barkley out of the backfield, unable to spin away as Mike Edwards makes the tackle. Barkley loses a yard as time winds down in this first quarter in Tampa, Florida. And Daniel Jones' first NFL start. His Giants trail the Tampa Bay Bucks by nine. On the right, David Cutcliffe, head coach at Duke during the Daniel Jones era, and he was the head coach at Ole Miss when Eli Manning. Let's not forget, he was also the offensive coordinator at the University of Tennessee. Peyton was right. there. Peyton's quarterback coach, offensive coordinator, then Eli's head coach in college, and he knows how to earn Daniel a paycheck. Duke. He knows how to earn a paycheck, get great quarterbacks. Yeah, pretty easy to earn a paycheck with those three. Check it down at 11 as we begin the second quarter. Jones over the middle, complete. Now to the 30-yard line, it's Ingram, his third catch today. Now you're seeing why Daniel Jones has such a high completion percentage, because he takes the easy throws when they're there. When we talked to Coach Shermer in our production meeting, he said, look, you can be right getting completions, but sometimes you can be more right. That's a very interesting take, too. and, and we'll, we'll build on that and a little bit why they made this decision. But here, third down and five, and if you're Todd Bowles, comes the pressure. Giants must get to the 35 for a first down. Jones rolling right. Under pressure. He will take off. He has a first down. Out across the 40-yard line as Daniel Jones picks up 10 and moves the chain. Well, exactly what Daniel Jones brings to the table. You're going to see the pressure. It's going to come right here with Kevin Minter. It's very well picked up by Saquon Barkley. And then if you don't protect the edges with a guy that can run, look, he's not a runner, but he can run. And this is a dynamic to this off that this offense hasn't seen since never, ever. <laughs> this is not your Eli Manning-led New York Giants squad. No shot at Eli. Daniel Jones is a superior athlete. Set. Blue 80. Hurt. From the 41-yard line, the handoff to Barkley up the middle. He took a hard hit. Head down to the field. Sarah Walsh, Sarah. Well, Kenny just mentioned it's 16 years before David Cutcliffe coached Daniel Jones. Jones at Duke, he coached Eli Manning at Ole Miss and told me that this has been an extremely emotional week for him. He said he knows the future is going to be bright for Daniel. He's built for this, but that the news about Eli left him with a hole in his gut. He's been in contact with both Giants quarterbacks, with Archie and Peyton Manning, and he says that he hopes that, quote, if this is the end, that Eli focuses on all this great body of work and the work he's put in and doesn't have a negative feeling, guys. All right, thanks, Sarah. We saw Barkley head to the sidelines after taking that hit. Jones complete out across midfield. It is Ingram once again, his fourth reception. That previous play, Kenny, go back and look. Jordan Whitehead's going to come in flying in here. It's kind of what he is, his M.O. And just the hit to the head and neck, I'm not sure if it's a shoulder, but he went off under what looked to me like a little bit of distress. Ronda, he looks like he's not controlling his body going to the ground. There he goes into the 10. I think you're right, T. So Gallman remains on the field. Shifts to the left side. Single, single, 
The clock wound all the way down. Delay a game. Offense number eight. Five yard penalty. Still first down. You know, just saw Saquon Barkley go into the tent. He was telling us yesterday that, look, I have to take on a bigger role because Eli Manning used to do all the checks. He'd be able to handle all those situations. Just experience. So without Saquon, and you have Wayne Goldman in there, who is a capable backup, it's a little bit different dynamic and should be interesting to see how this thing plays out if he is not able to come back in this football game. First at 15 following the delay of game penalty. As Jones throws over the middle and taking it all the way down to the 41 yard line is Sterling Shepard. Time for another game break. Carissa. Thanks, Kenny. Panthers trailing 7 0 in Arizona. Kyle Allen starting for the injured Cam Newton rolls to the right and finds Curtis Samuel for this five yard score, all tied up at seven. Kenny, Tiki, Rondé, and Sarah. All right, Carissa. Buccaneers and their fans keeping a close eye on that game. The Panthers have started the season 0 2. Bucks with a 12 3 lead today. Barkley remains on the sidelines. Second down at three. Jones on the slant. And that pass bounced away from the rookie out of Auburn, Darius Slayton, with Vernon Hargraves defending. Vernon Hargraves up top. He gave up a lot of completions last week. He had 12 tackles, but a lot of those were because of the completions in front of him. But watch this. Kevin Minter, seven years in the league. That's pretty good right there, man. <laughs> Lands on his feet. Good job by John Jones getting that ball out there. Yeah, that's, a, that's one you got to catch. Minter replacing the injured rookie Devin White, that linebacker for the Bucks. Third down and three. Jones throws near side. There is a flag. He was looking for Shepard. Carlton Davis defending. Pretty sure this is a hold and pass interference. Defense number 33. Spot foul. Automatic first down. The flag came out almost immediately, so let's see if he falls on his own here though. Carlton Davis is good at the line of scrimmage. A little grab of the jersey. Not enough for me to affect the route. I mean, it is what it is. The officials have eyes too and got to make judgment decisions in real time. A look at Barkley on the sidelines. Goldman in the backfield, first and 10 from the Bucks 32 yard line. Jones looking for Slayton. He was out of bounds. Yeah, and Darius Slayton back from his hamstring injury. He's a high speed guy with really good body control and he takes his shot at Carlton Davis over here. This is a really well placed throw. When I looked at Daniel Jones in the preseason some of his best completions were down the sideline just be able to put that touch on a speed guy is a is a gift and he definitely has that tough catch on his outside shoulder good news for the Giants with Saquon Barkley back on the field that's not good news that's great news for the Giants ninth play of the drive second down at 10 there's Barkley up the middle Barkley to the 26 yard line of the Bucks. I think those last four plays were all pressures by Todd Bowles' defense. And, you know, his setup is 3 4, but he has five guys on the line of scrimmage, with those two outside linebackers. They're not necessarily droppers. So if you're counting pressures as five guys in Surrey, they do it almost every single play. And when you get in these situations, third and short, I would expect the Giants to try to get some rub routes, something inside, try to free up. Sterling Shepard, who's working in the slot against MJ Stewart. Balls, of course, head coach of the New York Jets the last four years. Third down and four. Giants must get to the 22. Pressure on Jones. He escapes. Moving to his left. Now he throws. There is a flag. Catch is made by Barkley, who takes it down to the buck seven. Zero panic. Hey, it, 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 for looking to get into unbelievable, man. Okay, <laughs> and have this kind of poise. It's encroachment on Shaq Barrett. Offside. Defense number 58. Penalty decline. Result in the play. First down. Little early, but keep an eye on this quarterback here. 
zero panic. Just no panic. He doesn't see pressure as well as I think as some quarterbacks, some young quarterbacks do. He just kind of avoids it when he can, but not only that, Rondé, he gets out of the pocket to his left, throws it across his body right where it's supposed to be. Saquon staying active in scramble rules. Makes a big play here down inside the 10-yard line. Barkley game 19, first and goal from the Buccaneers, 7. Jones, Barkley off his hand. This was a well two hands set up play. Two hands. Taquan Barkley must catch this football. Two hands, man. Two hands. It's like what these are. This is one of those plays where it's a natural pick. The inside linebacker Levante David just has has him in coverage, but as you can see by the three two pictures hands. that we've shown, <laughs> he wasn't even in frame. All you got to do is take the little bit extra time and put two hands on it, like you said, T. How many hands? Two in. hands. <laughs> Can't afford to hit you in a bad place. On second and goal. This is Jones inside the five to the end zone. Touchdown. Oh, he knew that was coming eventually. When you have Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones in the backfield at the same time, there, there must be a read option in there. You're right. This is a play that has probably been in the playbook since the beginning of tramp. We actually uh, camp. We actually saw this. If you're a Giants fan, you saw this in one of the mini camps. You're like, man, they, they're doing a zone read. In his 16 seasons, the future Hall of Famer, Eli Manning, seven career rushing touchdowns. <laughs> one of them happened two years ago, I think, in this actual game. Great drive by New York. Had to answer. And they did. Rosas. Adds the extra point. They lost Barkley midway through the drive. He returned. Daniel Jones in his first NFL start takes it into the end zone. What a start for Daniel Jones. I got to tell you, having an athletic quarterback in the National Football League simply changes your game and your game planning. When you talk to Coach Shermer, we obviously saw the play where Rondé said he didn't panic. He's built for this. His heart rate does not raise. More importantly, if he gets outside of the pocket, you never know what he can do. So another opportunity for the Tampa Bay Bucks who have scored touchdowns on their first two drives as I'm joined today by a pair of barbers, Tiki and Rondé all the way to the right on a very special day. Here in Tampa, Tiki Rondé will be leaving us later in this second quarter. He will. He's going to go get his name put. I guess these are the rafters for, of, of a football stadium. Next to some of the all-time greats in Tampa Bay history. John Gruden, John Lynch, All-Star, Derek Brooks. The list goes on and on. Tony Dungy's up there as well as, well as Leroy Selman. It's going to be awesome. I'm proud of you, brother. Thank you, man. Rondé will become the 13th inductee in the Bucks Ring of Honor. As Winston goes deep for Evans, he's got it! That is finally grabbed down by Janoris Jenkins at the Giants' 20-yard line, 55-yard pass play. Jameis Winston always struggles with deep ball. He came in completing only 11%, but this matchup against Janoris Jenkins is not one that's going to favor the New York Giants. There's no whole safety. There's nobody back there to help this ball to the middle of the field. And again, Jameis Winston with this throw, just like the two previous balls down the field, he gave it some air, gave it that layering that great quarterbacks do to allow their big play receiver to go run underneath it. Not a huge play for Mike Evans. If Evans keeps this up, he might join you in the Ring of Honor at halftime. <laughs> oh, he's already there, brother. On first down, it's Jones to the 19-yard line of the Giants. I mean, what, what year is this for Mike Evans? Six? Five? five six years. He's already got every single receiving record in Tampa Bay. He'll get the, uh, the catches number from Ricky Bell at some point. I mean, he is simply, unquestionably, one of the top receivers in the NFL. He doesn't get a lot of credit obviously because he's in a small market. The team has not been winning, but there's a reason a guy in those situations goes to Pro Bowl after Pro Bowl has the respect of every single defensive back in the NFL. Third of the league in receiving yards set a franchise record last season over 1,500. Winston on second down to the end zone looking for Evans incomplete. Well, this is going to be one of those days for Janoris Jenkins. I, I, I've been out on a corner plenty of times where 
you know, you're not getting any help, but to not get any help all day long, this it might be asking a little much of Janoris Jenkins. What can he do here, Rodney? What can Janoris Dink Jenkins do here to well, mitigate this? Well, well, look, there's a size disadvantage, too. So of even so play, he can't jam him. Yeah, even plays that are contested down the field, he's at a disadvantage. I mean, I think James Bechter's asking a lot of his corner without giving some help on Mike Evans. Third down and nine. Winston in trouble. Wrapped up. Down he goes. O'Shane Simenes, the rookie out of Old Dominion. With the big sack on third down. Well, we asked him about Zimenez, and he said he just goes fast <laughs> all day long. He goes fast. And when a rusher has this much time, it's hard. DeMar Dotson gets away with a little bit of a hold. Can't hold him that long. Jameis Winston has nowhere to go with this football. The sack was inevitable. Great stop by this Giants defense. First player in NFL history. Last name begins with X. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to throw that out there. So here is Matt Gay, 47-yard attempt. Even though it's pronounced like a Z. Yes. We'll be right back after this message from Progressive. Tom out there, 10 men on the field. We'll look at Gay, who has missed two extra points today. Wind swirling here in Tampa. First extra point attempt, missed wide left, then he had one blocked. Yeah, don't be fooled by the flags. On the goalposts, they're not moving. But if you look at the top of the stadium and the flag on the ship, they are straight, straight out. Season high 40. Gay from 47. And this time he connects. Giants defense holds the Bucks to a field goal. Big third down sack. Tampa Bay by five. Head coach Pat Shermer, obviously Eli's been our starter to this point. We're 0-2. There are areas where we have to get better. We're going to address all areas, try to find ways to put a winning performance on the field. And that winning edge right now could be Daniel Jones. And I got to tell you guys, if I'm a New York Giants fan, I am over the moon excited about not only this game and the rest of the season, but the future. He looks amazing so far. Really could say the same thing about Tampa. He, you know, Jameis Winston has been efficient. He hasn't turned the ball over, and he looks confident. Valentine on the return. Out to the 24-yard line. Here's Daniel Jones's mobility. We see him getting out of the pocket. Play breaks down. Defender thinks he can cut him off, but he turns that corner. Picks up a big gain. And here he is getting pressure in the pocket. No panic. Slow heartbeat. Goes a perfect dime to Saquon Barkley. And this is the design that run to come out the backside. You got to defend an extra skill position player with Daniel Jones as your quarterback. And you say that. It's a, it's a perfect segue into what's going on in the field right now. If you're Todd Bowles right now, and you're the defensive backs and linebackers for Tampa, all of a sudden, that's in your head now. you got to think, this kid can run. He can beat us with his legs as well as his arm. Giants start from the 24-yard line off the fake to Barkley. Jones rolls right, fires downfield, just out of the reach of Sterling Shepard. This is a double move here by Sterling Shepard. About a step short of getting to this football here. Stutter and go. Shepard got hung up just a little bit. Otherwise, that one might have been completion. Good range showed there by rookie Mike Edwards, the safety for Tampa. And yeah, you know, look, they've found the guy they want to go at. They're going at Carlton Davis today mm -hmm. down the football field. He's probably been their best covered corner so far this season. And he's getting all the shots at him early in this football game. Second and 10, 24 yard line. There's Barkley. You know, Tick, you mentioned something earlier in the football game that I think it's, it's ringing true right now. If you're going to try to bang your head against the interior wall of this Bucks defense, you're going to fail. Yes, you've improved in the on the offensive line. Zeitler and Rimmers on the right side have been massive improvement to this Giants offensive line. But if you're not going to get to the edges, you got no chance against this Bucks defense. Yeah, right you're now. exactly right here. And here's the thing, Rondé. Saquon Barkley is a cutback runner. I was a cutback runner when I liked it, when I played. So the only way to get that to happen is to get to the edge and then find a lane. By going inside the tackles, you're not getting that done. 
Third down and 10. Giants must get to the 34. This play blown dead. Ball start. Ball start. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Just just, just <laughs> mentioned Mike Rimmers and praising him in the play of the offensive line, and this changes the math a little bit on third and long here. And it, the reason Mike Rimmers gets a little anxious there is because Todd Bowles just keeps bringing pressure. He keeps inserting linebackers and safeties into these gaps, and you know that you have to get back and set that edge quick. Gets him a five-yard penalty and a third and very long here for Daniel Jones. Third down and 15. Giants need the 34-yard line. As Jones sets and throws, it's nearly picked off by Mike Edwards. The Bucks are just playing too deep, man underneath. And Mike Edwards is going to be kicking himself. Carlton Davis is off, but he's playing underneath defense here. He knows that he has help over the top. Great read by the safety Mike Edwards. Just got to catch it, young man. Got to catch it. Can't hit you in a better place. That's when they got away. A little pressure here on Daniel Jones again. He is just immune to it. Does not care where he goes to the ground. He just, yeah, whatever. I'm going to put that ball right place. Bad decision. Very fortunate that that wasn't his first interception of his career. First punt of the game. Five possessions, five scores. Up until this point, Ronnie Dixon. And Bobo Wilson is met immediately as he fielded it at the 32 yard line. And then Antonio Hamilton with it. Terrific play on special teams. There he is, number 30. Bruce Arians, first season as Bucks head coach. Chatting with Tiki and Rade prior to the game today here in Tampa. And we take you back to the late <laughs> 70s babysitter, Bruce. Hey, this is a relationship long in the making. <laughs> Bruce and my father, JB. I think I'm on the right, Tiki. Yeah, that's me. They were they were teammates, yeah, they, roommates. They were teammates and Tech. roommates, and Bruce will tell you they were the first black and white roommates in the athletic department. Called himself Salt and Pepper. <laughs> Coolest coach of football, ladies and gentlemen. How was he as a babysitter? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> on first down, that pass gets broken up by Ogletree. We asked Bruce about. Watching you guys as youngsters, he said, Rondé was easy. Tiki was always hollering. That's because I was always sick. <laughs> I was the one that had the, uh, the the seizures. Me and Rondé suffered from febrile seizures when we were younger. We ultimately grew out of them, but it kept uh, whoever was sitting us pretty busy. Let's just be honest. You're just a pain in the butt, man. It is what it is. Better be one then than now. <laughs> How much did Bruce make per hour? <laughs> Nothing. Nada. He got some whiskey. You can see it behind him. <laughs> Second and ten as Winston steps up and throws, and it's through the hands of O.J. Howard with Jabril Peppers defending. Good play by Jabril Peppers down the field here. We mentioned panic. Defensive backs get in this situation, and sometimes they don't really know what to do. O.J. Howard's the matchup that they want. Let's watch how he plays through his hands right here. This is perfect. That is absolutely perfect play by Jabril Peppers defending O.J. Howard. A little bit early there. Well, Bruce Arians a challenge. Think so. Throws the red flag. Well, he's going to get this one too. Just a matter of time before we got one of these. We every week we see these pass interference plays being challenged. Tampa's challenging the ruling on the field with regard to defensive pass interference. Timeout. Now you said it was defended perfectly. Was there any contact? from Peppers to the arm of well, When you look at it super slow-mo, I think they're going to say this, but in my era, this is a really good play. Not anymore. Bill Vinovich taking a look at the last play. We welcome in Dean Blandino from Los Angeles. Dean, what did you see? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm with Rondé. In real time, this is a good play by the defense, but when you're able to slow After it down. After the play, number 21 significantly hindered the the pass receiver. His defensive pass interference at the 42 yard line. Please reset the game clock to 552. Tampa Bay has not charged the timeout. 
and, and in replay, that's the right call. The arm is there early. It restricts the receiver's ability to make a play on the ball, and they're able to review it, and Coach Arians wins the challenge. Well, Dean, you and I have been back and forth on this, probably on either side of it <laughs> in two weeks. But yes, in super slow motion, that is absolutely hindering the receiver significantly, as the official just told us. But I, I'm with you in real time. That is a great football play by Jabil Preppers in today's NFL. It's a pass down to the 42-yard line. Buccaneers gained 29 yards on the penalty. Play action. Winston fires downfield. It is caught. O.J. Howard makes the play. Grant Haley defending. 30 yards. First and 10 from the Giants 12. Well, this is a couple of times now that we've seen Jameis Winston really deal with pressure well. Stepping up in the pocket, this resetting the pocket, moving out and finding his receiver. Great throw and catch. Barber takes the handoff on first down, gains a couple. And let's go back to this really quick because I got to show you where O.J. Howard came from. He came from the other side of the formation, so Haley is in a trail position from the get-go, and he's in bad position to defend O.J. Howard. Another big play for this Bucks pass offense. Five minutes remaining, second quarter. Second down and nine. Winston down to the nine-yard line of the Giants. Looked think, like he thought yeah. about handing it off to Peyton Barber. No, I don't think they're running zone read or QB read with Jameis Winston and Peyton Barber. It looked like he just missed that handoff. A little bit of a wide route by Peyton Barber right there. <laughs> that ever happened to you, Tiki? Uh, no, because I wanted the football. I, I was <laughs> precise. On my, <laughs> on my football. Yeah, the, it, this, that was not a Jameis Winston Cam impersonation. No. Third down at seven. Bucks can pick up a first down at the two. Have not mentioned Chris Godwin yet today. He's in a slot. This is the time you should find him. Godwin number 12. Winston on third down was hit as he got rid of the football. And it's picked up by Alec Ogletree. There was no whistle. And Ogletree will take it all the way back. Come on, Jim. Inside the 35-yard line. Yeah, he pulled a hamstring, it looked like. That's why he pulled up. And there's a flag on the field right now, but the flag is going to be because there was three Buccaneers players that were running onto the field. Let's, keep an, let's watch this really quick. It, 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 he got hit as he threw this. And they're going to have to determine if that's a fumble. I think it's, I think he had possession of that football when it went through. Really but on the field is a fumble covered by the defense. Now remember the play in the Saints Rams game that was blown dead last week. Yeah. In this case, they did not blow the whistle because they could take a look at it in replay. You're right. And it, reverse it if they need to. In that Rams Saints game, the ball was clearly out of Jeff Jared Goff's hand before he tried to throw it. It's clearly in Jameis Winston's hand. This will be overturned. Call of field was overturned. It was an incomplete pass as we suspected it would be, and then Ogletree injured on the return. I'm pretty that's pretty clear that his hand wasn't empty when his arm is going forward here. And, and, and they give credit to the officials here, not blowing that whistle and calling it dead. The unfortunate, very unfortunate part for the New York Giants is the guy that we highlighted at the beginning of this game, the leader on defense, Alec Ogletree, definitely pulled up lame with his hamstring. 27-yard attempt, back game. This kick is good. Bucks extend to an eight-point lead. As we celebrate the 100th season of the NFL, we take a look back at the careers of a couple of pretty special twin brothers. Upon leaving Virginia, Tiki and Rondé Barber found themselves on different teams for the first time in their lives. No brother, no problem, as Tiki went on to become the Giants' all-time leading rusher, while Rondé went on to become the only player in NFL history to record 45-plus interceptions and 25-plus sacks. That last shot in Philadelphia following the 92-yard interception return, which essentially closed veteran stadium yeah no, I know I appreciate Rondé for doing that because he has made um, 
He's made uh, Philadelphia Eagles fans hate me a little bit less. Right. <laughs> oh. That spot will not be empty following halftime. It right next to your coach, John Rondé a Barber, with the accent over the E, for those oh. who care. Barber will be up there. Again, I, like I said it before, Rondé, but I'm proud of you. You, you had a, an ability to singularly focus on being great. That's why you're getting this distinct honor. The yellow jacket, the gold jacket will be next. Giants back on offense, trailing by eight. We'll look at Alec Ogletree down to Sarah. Kenny, Alec Ogletree is down here on the side. A trainer was rubbing his left hamstring. He didn't go in the injury tent. He's walking around, but his return is questionable, Kenny. All right, thanks very much, Sarah. One of the leaders of this Giants defense. And you see him pull up. It's, it's immediate what happens, and then he goes right to the back of his left hamstring. It's just unfortunate, particularly on a play that is going to be called back. And without him, you know, they got we got young Tay Davis in there. They they have David Mayo, but we'll have to keep an eye and see how they replace such an important part of their defense. First and 10, 25-yard line on the toss. It is Barkley. And again, he gets swallowed up. For Saquon Barkley coming into this drive, seven carries, only 11 yards. We've talked a lot about Will Golson, Vita Bay, and Dominican Sue. Big Bo Allen just destroyed the center there, Jalapio, off the ball and nailed Saquon Barkley before he got any traction on the run game and again, continue to struggle with that inside zone. It's going nowhere right now. Daniel Jones, the Giants' leading rusher with 18 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Tuck it down at 11. Jones to Barkley out of the backfield. Upended it as he crosses the 30 and remains down. Oh, he, uh -oh. Got, he got hit hard right there on the knee by Mike Ed Edwards. And Mike Edwards has been really active in this football game. I do not like the way that he went down on this left knee here. You wonder, Ronnie, if that's a thigh bruise or if that's a knee injury. We'll have to get an update. Well, I think, look how he land. Ankle? Maybe it's an ankle. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to really tell. You can tell they're trying to feed him, though. He is still really struggling over there on the sideline. Replaced by Wayne Gallman. Third down and five. Giants need the 35-yard line for a first down. Jones under pressure. Fires complete for a first down. Out at the 45-yard line, it's Darius Slayton. Get the 15, his first NFL reception. Well, Kenny, they just continue to bring pressure on Daniel Jones. He's so unfazed by it. He's looking downfield like, yeah, I knew I was going to complete that ball. Well done by the rookie quarterback. That one had fire on it, too, Rondo. Jones now 11 of 17. On first down, lost the football. And it looks like... Carl Nassib has recovered. Yeah, this was the one thing that you worried about with Daniel Jones in the preseason was ball security. He had two fumbles in the preseason. You hear, you get it here because of a lack of awareness of where pressure is coming from. That just comes with experience. Exactly. Right? And I mentioned it earlier in this football game. He just doesn't see the pressure. He's unaware of it because he's always keeping his eyes downfield. And if that, no matter where that ball is, good defenders don't always sack the quarterback. They sack the football. A great, great play by the Bucks defense. And you're seeing now what the rest of the league is finding out about this Tampa Bay defense. They play hard, they play fast and physical, and they always get after the football, get another turnover here. Shaq Barrett, his fifth sack of the season. Carl Nassib, his brother Ryan is a former Eli Manning backup. He comes up with the recovery. And now Winston dumps it off to Jones. And a nice tackle made by Grant Haley. And this will take us to the two-minute warning, but there was a flag. Yes. Barkley heading off to the Giants locker room. Prior to the pass, holding. Defense number 21. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. 
You know the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on a drive here, but this is not a good look on Saquon Barkley's face here. And when you have to be helped off the field, not on your own power, that's worrisome. He's got such a powerful lower body. You, you almost feel like he's immune to those type of injuries. But in fact, I said that earlier today when talking to some folks. He's he's got tree trunks for legs and ankles and calves. It was just the, the impact though. The impact was so different on his ankle and his knee. God, you really hope that he's okay. Two minute warning in Tampa. Interesting start for the Giants offense today. And then this. Uh, that you just see where the ankle twist and then Daniel Jones with the lack of ball security here. It's a takeaway for this Bucks defense, but this right here, this picture right here is indelible right now for Giants fans at home watching Saquon Barkley barely able to hobble off worst football nightmare, field. Rondé. Worst nightmare. And he hasn't really got going in this football game, but just the presence of him, you know, keeps everybody on their toes, and without him, they're a different offense. Red State complete. Barry Agumawale out of the backfield to the Giants 28 yard line and the Bucks will get in two minute mode here and when they do you'll see a lot of Dario Kabuwale and he's got great receiver abilities out of the backfield he can block second down at two Winston fires complete for a first down Chris Godwin with his first catch Barkley's teammate at Penn State Saquon Barkley only 10 yards on eight carries here in the first half and now in the Giants locker room as a timeout is taken by the Giants stopping the clock at 125. What's coming up at halftime, Kurt Benefit? Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll travel to Seattle for the Saints and Seahawks, then hop a flight down to San Francisco to see how the Steelers and Niners are doing, and then drive down I-5 to check out the L.A. Chargers hosting the Houston Texans. If I get my seat right, we'll get you a Wild West edition of the Visa Halftime. All right, thanks very much, Kurt. A minute and 31 remaining in the half. Rondé's still with us. Yeah. You gotta head down at some point. I'll be sprinting down there, guys. That, that's what I'm here for, bro. You know that, right? Yeah, they're gonna hold the elevator here. I wanna see this drive out. And you know, when I, I, I've looked, watched Jameis Winston over the, his five year career here, and really, he gets in two minute situations, it's where he starts to thrive. His energy starts getting up. He starts making quicker and faster decisions. And with the talent he has at wide receiver, he can really just pick and choose against James Betcher's defense if they're playing man to man. And if they are, you gotta think 13 is gonna be involved. 13 is Mike Evans, first and 10 from the Giants' 20 yard line. Play action as Winston throws. It's Evans, his third touchdown here in the first half. Without a doubt, that's where that play was going. The Giants lined up single high safety. They know that Janoris Jenkins was one on one with big Mike Evans. And Tiki, you said it earlier, he's been playing a lot of off coverage, but it does just does not matter. Mike Evans is an underrated route runner. Look at him turn him around. No oh. chance he could defend that. And if the ball is on time and in a perfect place, easy touchdown. Mike Evans, third of the day. And I think that's what Jameis Winston has been doing really well over the last couple of weeks, Ronnie. The ball's coming out on time and in places where his wide receivers can catch and go as opposed to catch and stop. And I just asked you in the last break or two breaks ago, Ronnie, what is a DB supposed to do in that situation? Because you're smaller, you can't jam him. What do you do? Go to the sideline and ask for help is what you do. The Buccaneers have scored on all five possessions. Three touchdowns and a pair of field goals. Gay with the extra point after missing two earlier. Buccaneers extend their lead and we head to Los Angeles for a game break with Carissa. Thanks Kenny. So the Panthers were trailing 10-7 in Arizona when Kyle Allen connects with DJ Moore for this 52 yard score. Allen has a great first half going for himself. 13 of 16 for 173 yards. Panthers up 14 to 10 at the half. Kenny. All right. Thanks very much Carissa. So the turnover the fumble by Daniel Jones leads to seven Tampa Bay points and now he's in a stressful situation right Teak, you know this two minutes at the end of the half you're getting the ball after halftime the Giants are 
one thing that you want to be able to say here is something positive going in. See if they can get down the field, get in at least field goal range, and get some points on the board. Yeah, look, as much as we want to see Daniel Jones, this is also a, a learning experience for him. One with ball security, as we were just talking about. But being put in this situation where we know his heartbeat's not going to beat fast, he has the same demeanor as Eli Manning. Let's not forget, Eli was really good in two-minute situations for most of his career. A minute 26 remaining in the half. Start Saturday strong with the big noon Saturday game of the week. Texas Tech and number five, Oklahoma. It all starts with the big noon kickoff pregame show at 11 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Here's Eli Manning. Only the second game since he took over as the Giants starter back in 2004. But he has not started, of course, two seasons ago in Oakland. You know, Smith made the start for head coach Ben McAdoo. Interestingly, Rondé's seen and called both of these games. Yes, <laughs> yes we have. Daniel Jones, first NFL start today. First and 10, 25-yard line, complete to Sterling Shepard for a gain of five. This one feels different, though, than those. Obviously, the Geno Smith substituting in for Eli Manning just didn't feel right. And when we talked to Coach Shermer, he said, you don't bench Eli Manning for Geno Smith. <laughs> I think we all agree with that. Down to one minute remaining in this second quarter on second down. Jones going deep. He was looking for Russell Shepard, the well, former Buck. Well, if you're the Bucks here on defense, you're in that. There's two types of two-minute situations. Chunk, where you're going to give up plays in front of you and challenge. And the Bucks are choosing to challenge their receivers here. This is one-on-one -on -one coverage with no help in the middle of the field. If that's a completion, that's exactly what they don't want. Yeah, that's a touchdown if that's completion. But, Rondé, you got a rookie quarterback. You're going to bring pressure. Isn't this what you're supposed to do if you're... Todd Bowles. I don't think they are hiding their intentions at all. They're going to put so much pressure on this young quarterback. I would not be surprised if Todd Bowles brings pressure once again. Giants without Saquon Barkley in the locker room. Third down and four. Pressure on Jones. Rolling right. Jones headed for the sidelines. Took a hit from Levante David. Needed the 35-yard line, and he did not get there. Again, just six guys inserting into the pressure here. You're going to see a little game from Ryan Nassib coming inside here. Uh, or Carl Nassib, I'm sorry, working uh, with Dominican Sue. But Daniel Jones, that ability to get out of the pocket, he did not, however, pick up the first down, and the Giants are going to have to punt this ball away. Buccaneers have all three of their timeouts. All right, knock him dead at halftime, Rondé. Yeah, you guys hold it down up here. I'll be right back. Good luck. I know you haven't written your speech, but I know you'll knock well, it out of the park. He was asking us for advice during the last commercial break. Yeah, I said, don't be verbose. Say thank you. We might let him back in the booth during the <laughs> second half, TV. Exactly. Taken at the 22 by Bobo Wilson. Out of bounds at the 30, so with 36 seconds remaining, there is a flag at the end of the return as Daniel Jones checks out his last possession. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 17. 10-yard penalty, Tampa ball, first down. Well, it's been a close to perfect first half, Tiki, for the Tampa Bay Bucks. They've scored on... All five possessions, Mike Evans with a career-high three touchdowns. You're right, and a lot of the credit belongs to their a young offensive coordinator and Byron Leftwich, who's found ways to get Mike Evans in space, one-on-one -on -one matchups against an inferior corner, at least an inferiorly sized corner. So no matter what Janoris Jenkins does, the ball is always available to him. And we talk a lot about Bruce Arians. One of the great things that's come up a lot in the media over the last couple of days is his attention to diversity. Both of his coordinators, actually all three of his coordinators, are African Americans. And when he talks about it, he says, I want to give them opportunities. Give them opportunities to be play callers. And Byron Leftwich, in his third game now here in Tampa, has done a heck of a job. Also worked with Bruce in Arizona, but was not the coordinator. Here's Jones. He picks up a first down. And again, Ronald Jones all the way out to the 45-yard line. And, he, and again, here's a great call by Leftwich here. 
in two-minute situations, especially when there's not a lot of time on the clock, you call a play that's a draw or something quick hitting, and if you get a big play out of it, then you can put yourself in scoring position. The game 25, longest run of the day for the Bucks. Winston throws over the middle, complete in Giants territory to Mike Evans, and the Bucks will use their first timeout. Seventh reception, Evans had only six over the first two games. Seven today, three trips to the end zone. Yeah, seven receptions, three of them are touchdowns. Here's Mike Evans. This is the first one where Janoris Jenkins was in no man land. Jameis put it exactly where it needed to be. Here's a quick slant, or a quick hitch, I should say, off of some inward motion. And here's the last one. Every one of these, the ball was exactly where it needed to be. Mike Evans, who only had six catches to date, now has seven on the season. Three of those touchdowns and 146 yards. Ten targets, seven catches today. And you mentioned Janoris Jenkins, very outspoken after last week's game about the effort by his fellow defenders in yeah. the game against the Buffalo Bills. Look, this isn't an effort thing for Janoris Jenkins. It's just he's not in the right position. Winston complete, Agun Bawale to the 34. The Bucks will use their second timeout with 17 seconds on the clock. Now, a lot of this season is a referendum on Jameis Winston. He's on his fifth-year option. People are, this team and this organization, the fans, maybe even his teammates are trying to determine whether or not he's the guy going forward. But when you see plays like he's made with Mike Evans today, when you see a play like that dead into the blitz coming right down his face, making the right call, making the right throw, 152.1 passer rating as well. This gives you belief that Jameis can be that guy who had all that hype after the Heisman Trophy at Florida State and the National Championship. 158.3 would be a perfect rating, so he's pretty close. Second down at four, one timeout for the Bucks. Winston going deep to the end zone. Too far for Bobo Wilson with DeAndre Baker defending down to 11 seconds. Now, again, I like this by Byron Leftwich. You take a shot. Once you get over the 50-yard line, you get in strikeable range. Go ahead and take a shot at it. You Remember might catch Bruce him off guard. Arians told us on Friday, we asked him if he ever butts in with Leftwich calling plays. He said, once in a while, I'll tell Byron to take a shot. <laughs> I think that might have just happened. Bruce Arians is standing there stoically. Third down and four. 11 seconds on the clock. Three receivers to the right side. As Winston fires far side. And this one was caught out of bounds by Evans. So the Bucks will send out the field goal unit with four seconds remaining. Still an amazing catch by Mike Evans here. This is one, or this is an example where Coach Betcher, defensive coordinator of the Giants, had them in a zone. Jameis almost put that one right where it had to be. Instead, you're going to get a long field goal attempt. Looks like a 52 and a half yarder. Giants have sent a couple of defenders back. Right around the goal line. One in the end zone. 52 yard attempt from the left hash. From 52, Gay's kick is good. A new career long for the rookie out of Utah. Buccaneers, six possessions, six scores. Giants get the ball first. Runde inducted into the ring of honor at halftime. We send it to Los Angeles. Kurt and the gang take it away. Winston, end zone. Evans, touchdown. Jones inside the five to the end zone. Touchdown! As Winston throws, it's Evans, his third touchdown here in the first half. Today's game flow brought to you by Progressive here in Tampa. As Rondé was inducted into the Buccaneers Ring of Honor moments ago, Kenny Albert along with Tiki Barber, uh, an emotional scene. Rondé and uh, most of his family members down in the field. <laughs> you were up here with me, but 
Uh, you've gone through it with the Giants. I have. Uh, what went through your mind as we were watching? Look, I'm, I'm so proud of my brother. And as I said before he went down there, he's singularly focused on being great at everything he does. And I always joke with him because he always follows me. I started first in college. I started first in, when I got to the Nassau Football League. But he always exceeded me. Um, and it's because of his, it's a testament to him. And that's what that name represents. All right, let's take a look back at part of the ceremony here in Tampa moments ago. I'm joining the Brookses, the Saps, the Lynch, Paul Gruber I play with, my best friend Mike Allstott. But it's these other guys. I played the game for them just like I played the game for you guys. I hope I made you proud. And before I go back upstairs and go to work, I'm going to give it to you one more time. Pointing to the nameplate on the back of the jersey as he did at Veterans Stadium back in January 2003. The last touchdown scored in the vet Philly. That was a championship game. Our partner, your twin brother, what a moment. Yeah, it was a great moment. It's a great moment for us, his family. Great moment for his extended family, which is the Glazers and his Buccaneers community, both the players and the fans. Everybody's proud of him. He said, I hope we made, he made them proud. He definitely did, brother. He definitely did. All right, now let's see how quickly he gets back up to the broadcast booth. <laughs> He's quick. I don't know if that elevator moves fast enough for him to get up here before this thing kicks off, but. Daniel Jones in his first NFL start. But the Giants on two scoring drives. Field goal in their first possession, then a touchdown drive, a fumble late in the second quarter which led to a Buccaneers touchdown. Yeah no it's for a minute this felt like it's going to be a tight game. Daniel Jones is actually playing some pretty good football. The third down conversions which have been so bad for the Giants for a lot of the season are actually way up 63 percent five of eight Daniel Jones has been but it's been the bigger side on the other side. The defense that just plagued them all season long which has been the Achilles heel again today. Giants got the ball first here in the third quarter. They will start from the 25-yard line. One of the key moments, uh, Tiki back in the first half, the injury suffered by Saquon Barkley. Yeah, you never want to get hit or get turned up like that because so many things can happen when your body is in the air. You're not in control of your legs. And here we see him limping off the field with the assistance of two giant staff members. He is not in the game right now. Wayne Gallman was a really good back in and of himself, but he's not as powerful of a runner as Saquon is. Rondé has returned. That was impressive. And that jacket's pretty cool, bro. <laughs> Thank you, bro. First and 10, 25-yard line off the fake to Goldman. Jones pass is caught by Evan Ingram. Still going down the sideline. Evan Ingram will take this all the way. <laughs> what a great read by Daniel Jones. More importantly, what a great job by Evan Ingram. But Big plays like this only happen when you get guys blocking downfield as Darius Slayton does. Picks up this one block. Evan Ingram takes it the distance. How about the run after the catch ability? And we mentioned earlier in this game, Tiki, he's a wideout. He runs like a wideout. Vernon Hargrave is one of the fastest guys in the Bucs secondary. No chance of closing that distance, and it's only one tackle. Right? When you're a safety in the middle of the field, you have one shot to find the angle, especially on a guy that's this athletic. Huge play for Daniel Jones, his Giants offense. 75 yards, first touchdown pass in the NFL for Daniel Jones on the first play of this second half. That's a memorable one. Here we are now with this game. It doesn't feel so out of hand right now. It was going into the halftime, 28 to 10. Giants' perception of Ingram's career, now the Giants go for two. So the Giants convert and pull to within 10. Well, you're going to see Sterling Shepard going to get matched up on Levante David. And they create 
Here's Levante David. Sterling Shepard's going to run in there. He just creates a natural, natural pick from his own players. Great play design, great execution. Two points on the board for Sterling Shepard. And I agree with you, Tiki. This, that two-point conversion is crucial. Obviously makes it a 10-point game here, two-possession game. And it's just the feel. The feel is different coming out of halftime. You, we always talk about going in, making adjustments. What are you going to do differently? Yep. And they came out firing. Like you got to have momentum changing play. It's a crossing route to Evan Ingram, 15 or so yards deep. You just hope for a big play. You don't expect for a 75 yarder. Fantastic job by Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, he's done nothing but impress from the very beginning. And here we see Saquon Barkley on the sideline. This is not an encouraging sign at all. He's got a boot on his ankle, gets a hug from Coach Shermer, which doesn't portend anything good. Buccaneers will start at their 25-yard line, leading the Giants by 10 down to Sarah Walsh. Sarah. Guys, a great start for the Giants here in the second half, but they're going to have to go the rest of the way without Saquon Barkley. He's had x-rays. He's on crutches. That right foot is in a boot. He will not play, obviously, again today. Neither will Alec Ogletree. They are both ruled out for the Giants. Kenny. Thanks, Sarah. And Ogletree injured on a return that was called back. Whistle was not blown. Initially ruled a fumble by Winston, but reversed to an incomplete pass. So, unfortunately for the Giants, they did not get the ball on the turnover, and they lose one of their leaders on the defensive side, Alec Ogletree. Peyton Barber out to the 26-yard line, gate of one. Oh, games are about momentum. You have a play like the Giants did to start this second half, and momentum changes it just the feeling changes the Giants fan in in the tendons here feel the change as well now Jameis Winston in this offense you can come out and try to answer that but if you're the Giants you can continue that momentum if you get a stop here on their first possession of the half Kay Davis 58 in the game for Ogletree Winston all of the middle it's OJ Howard this is a broken record put three receivers away from the big tight end get him on a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here and he's just gonna win he's just gonna win his size is too much for a defensive back playing outside leverage to come in and make a play on this ball and again great quick decision by Jameis Winston knew exactly where he wanted to put that football big game to OJ Howard 18 yard pass play from the 44 yard line it's Barber Back down to Sarah. Kenny Bruce Arians was really happy with his team in the first half. He said these first five minutes are going to be critical. As for Mike Evans, I said, are we going to see him just being fed throughout the rest of this game? He said, yeah, the Giants keep playing like that on him. They love the Janoris Jenkins matchup with Evans. Seven receptions, Sarah, 146 yards and three touchdowns for Mike Evans in the first half. Not bad at all. Second down and six. Up the middle and across midfield, it's Barber. Against this Giants defense, guys, they have not stopped the Bucks today. They have not forced a punt. Six possessions, six scores, three touchdowns, three field goals. The Giants have now allowed 11 drives of at least 70 yards. Yeah. Touchdown drives over the first 10 quarters this season. Yeah, that's a little bit embarrassing if you're Coach Betcher, who takes some pride in being very similar to Todd Bowles and putting pressure on these guys. They are so young on the defensive side of the ball. It's it's tough for them to make plays, as evidenced by the fact that they have zero turnovers on the season. They'll try and stop the Buccaneers on third down and three. Winston on the slant. It was broken up, nearly picked off by Janoris Jenkins. And just a bad pass by Jameis Winston. I think if he gets this out in front of him, this is completion. He's giving him that room. There's plenty of space there. For this completion and but a good job too, Tiki by Janoris Jenkins undercutting this route and we've seen him do this his entire career he's got seven defensive touchdowns for a reason he is a splash playmaker sure he wants that one back first punt of the day by the Bucks Bradley Pinion from his 40 TJ Jones back deep it will bounce into the end zone touchback. Giants with a quick strike early in this third quarter. 
on their first play. Jones, 75 yards to Ingram. Giants offense back out. Cut point game here in Tampa. Daniel Jones in his first NFL start. 13 of 20, 198 yards. One passing touchdown, ran for one. Saquon Barkley injured during the first half. Now on crutches. Big day for Evan Ingram. 75 yard touchdown reception on the first play here in the third quarter. And now following the Buccaneers' first punt of the game. Giants start from their 20 with Wayne Goldman in the backfield for the injured. Saquon Barkley, they get it into the hands of Sterling Shepard, and he will pick up a first down out to the 38 gain of 18. Guys, I think we can agree that this Giants offense has been exactly as advertised. It's diverse. It's multiple. Seeing reverse plays out of the receiver, that's the second one today. And I think they've been benefited mostly by the return of Sterling Shepard. His work as a receiver, his work as a runner, great block there by Evan Ingram, by the way. And this offense is diverse. It looks more alive, has much more energy, and I think that's what they were trying to get out of inserting this young quarterback into the into play. Empty backfield on first down. As Jones throws, and it is Shepard once again. Throwing Shepard out to the 47. So Shepard returns today, but Cody Latimer is out. Still no Golden Tate as they await his return from suspension. And I continue to be impressed, Deacon. I'm sure you agree with just the confidence of the kid. He doesn't, he's not phased. Yeah, he's unfazed. He, he, he's down in a football game uh, at halftime. One pass, he's right back in it. And right. it, it's it's so workmanlike. It's almost as if, he, as, as if he's been there before in the NFL, and he's making it look very routine to me. This is Goldman, his first carry, and he, he picks up the first down. Yeah, you know. Daniel Jones before the draft, he wanted the challenge of the big city, whether it was because of the pressure or the opportunity, whatever it was, and he's thriving in it right now. You know, unlike Eli, when he first started for the Giants back in 2004, it was a struggle for him. Maybe the talent around him wasn't as good. Daniel Jones is making every throw, pressure in his face, the ball gets out, it's on point. Uh, you got to be impressed if you're a Giant fan. Giants brass here, and especially Coach Shermer. When you talk about the talent around Eli, you weren't referring to the running back, were you? <laughs> no, I was not. Now Jones escapes pressure, fires downfield, and it's caught! Darius Slayton! Man, this kid is awesome. It's just escaping again to his left, right? Carl Nassib has great pressure from his front side and just watch how easily he moves away from it Aren't they? Keeping, you're not his eye, to... keeping his eyes downfield to boot you're not that's supposed to be able to throw that ball that far going left 46 yard connection as the Bucks make wholesale changes and the timeout is taken Five or six bucks right off First the field as the Giants yeah. headed to the line. Well, the Giants made a substitution. The Bucks can, but the Giants don't make a substitution. Hey, look, there's eight guys, seven guys coming in the game. Five, at least five guys coming into the game there. They had to take a timeout. Great heady play by Daniel Jones getting to the line of scrimmage and smart threat threatening a snap. Yeah. A hockey game broke out. A full yeah. line change for <laughs> the right. Bucks. You either got to get a, a free play there. Well, it's hard to make a line change that many guys when you're down inside the red zone. You're, the, the restraining line for the team is at the 30. But, I mean, that's a 20, 25 yard run for any substitute player coming in yeah and it was all the big boys too yeah i think ronde made it a good point here if the giants had substituted even one player then the buccaneers would have had the opportunity to substitute before you'll see the ref stand over the ball that was not the case there all right first and goal from the four off the fake to goldman jones throws and it's incomplete in the vicinity of Russell Shepard. He had him open initially. Russell Shepard's going to be wide open. He's going to just kind of sit up right here. And Daniel Jones, after this play fake, just doesn't see him. The ball comes out right now. It's a touchdown. He holds it just a second too long. And good understanding, though, between wide receiver and quarterback that when he's running out of the pocket, keep moving. He's just a little bit late behind on that delivery. Second and goal, four-yard line. Ball into the backfield. Set. 
This is Coleman, takes the handoff, and with the push, gets down inside the two, and then a flag. Now the Giants are very heavy passing the ball on first and second downs, except when they get into the red zone. This is where you could use. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 18. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's on Benny Fowler. Take a look. Benny Fowler right there. I think he's going to try to come down on the safe, or no, it's the corner, Vernon Hargraves, and yes. Not necessarily, it doesn't take a lot. I mean, we've had a couple of games already where we've seen you know, minimal, if any, contact. It's just a perception that it is a block in the back. It's benefited also by Vernon Hargrave going to the ground, but the official that threw the flag is behind that play. All he sees is the number 18 of the jersey hitting number 28, and as Tiki mentioned, it would be a benefit, especially on those short yards running situations to have a Saquon Barkley. Fortunately, he is done for the day. Following the penalty, Giants push back to the 13-yard line, second and goal, empty backfield. Goldman, bottom of your screen, split out wide to the right. Jones looking left, and he throws. Pass was caught by Russell Shepard at the seven-yard line of the Bucks. Well, the Giants come out and empty here, right? And usually when you're playing man-to-man -man defense, you know that they're undressing the defense. The Bucks are in zone, so this is always going to be the route. A little pivot route on the linebacker, get a receiver on a linebacker. They've done it to certain effect already today. They tried to get it there, but good heads-up tackle by M.J. Stewart. Get him on the ground. Big third down here. Keep an eye on Evan Ingram, top of your screen in that isolation. Third and goal from the seven. Daniel Jones on third down, lobs one up. There is a flag, and it is a catch by Sterling Shepard for a Giants touchdown. Looks like you're going to get an illegal hand to the face here. This touchdown should be upheld. Great job by Sterling Shepard shaking that one off to get to the corner. Great throw by Daniel Jones as well. Illegal use of hands. Hands to the face. Defense number 28. Penalty decline. Resulting play. Touchdown. Oh, he's just out of frame for us. He's kind of right there. Watch Vernon Hargraves. Man to man coverage here. Hands to the face. And he put himself out of position. But you nailed it, Tiki. What a fantastic throw by Daniel Jones. He put it to a spot. Russell Shepard does all the rest of the work. One knee down, full from Sterling Shepard. One knee down, great completion. Second touchdown of the career for Daniel Jones. Andre, you know this from playing this that position so for so many years. If you jam and miss, you're in trouble. Yeah, well, especially in those tight bunches. The extra point is good, just inside the left upright. Jones to Shepard. Giants have pulled to it in three. Look at Daniel Jones as a youngster growing up in North Carolina. His first NFL start today. Ran in for a touchdown back in the second quarter. And has thrown two TD passes during the third. Evan Ingram took this one 75 yards. And then Sterling Shepard to pull the Giants to within three. They trailed by 18 at the half. Now, you know, Daniel Jones with the relationship with David Cuffcliffe, his uh, head coach at Duke. You'd think he was a fan of the Mannings growing up. He's actually a fan of Jake DeLone. Well, I mentioned DeLone first, and then Peyton and Eli as well. So they, they were in the top three. <laughs> yes, of course. Especially when you go to this passing camp. Which Daniel Jones did. He first met Eli Manning after his redshirt freshman year at Duke when he attended the Manning Passing Academy. Ironically, Jones' roommate, was Pat Shermer's son, Kyle, wow. who's a quarterback now on the Kansas City Chiefs practice squad. Hey, you never know. Relationships run the world, right? So Daniel Jones rooms with Kyle Shermer at the Manning Passing Academy, and now, less than four years later, he replaces Eli, and his head coach was Pat Shermer. I think that informed the Giants' decision? Hey, Dad, you might want to take this kid. Drafted sixth overall in the first round as Jones passes it to the outside, and... He's pulled out. Nice tackle made by the rookie out of Georgia. First round pick, DeAndre Baker. 
Yeah, just one too many cuts there for Ronald Jones. He is a bounce runner, though, Tiki. He is a guy who puts his foot in the ground as good as anybody that I've seen. But he tends to do it just a little too much. He's got such a big body. He needs to get north and south a little bit quicker. But that just he can't take away. Great tackle by Baker on the outside there. Second down at eight. Winston, pump fake, now throws. Intended for Mike Evans, incomplete. You know, Rondé, at halftime during your Ring of Honor ceremony, you mentioned you'd love to be back down on the field. <laughs> Bucks have been outscored 15 nothing since the ceremony. <laughs> I think don't, they need you. Don't put that on me, man. Don't put that on me. Look, th th that's on the New York Giants. The defense finally stepped up at the beginning of the half, got them off the field, and then the Giants offense answered. And we talked about momentum. Momentum is def definitely in their favor, and this does not help the Bucks at all. Donovan Smith is out of the game, and Wells here has only been with the Bucks for about two weeks. Looks like maybe he was poked in the eye. We'll get an update here in a little bit. So Josh Wells now at left tackle. Third down at eight. Bucks near the 35-yard line. Winston can't find anyone. Moving to his left. Down he goes. Marcus Golden takes down Jameis Winston, forcing another Bucks punt. Well, nowhere to throw the football. And what's the difference? These corners are out here pressing the line of scrimmage now. All four of them across the board. And again, two deep, man underneath. They know they have help over the top. Jameis Winston does not want to pull the trigger and give a risky throw. And they are not able to stem this Giants tide that is flowing so well right now. Defense is hot. And Daniel Jones with the ball seems really scary as well. Marcus Golden's hair flowing as well in the back. His <laughs> yes. second sack today. Nice. Pinion punting from his 14-yard line. T.J. Jones waiting. Takes it at the 26. Lost it. And now... A nice return out to the 40, setting up excellent field position for Daniel Jones and the Giants offense following the second sack of the day by Golden. Eli Manning has played in more games than any other Giant in history. First Giant to play in 16 seasons, two-time Super Bowl MVP, and I think all three of us would agree a surefire future Hall of Famer. Yeah, the numbers are going to do him justice. Longevity, top 10 in passing yards, touchdowns as well, and two Super Bowls and MVPs. Ball start. And it just begs the question, Tiki, this is a great Ball one start. for you. Offense number 88. Five yard penalty, still first down. It just begs the question as he stands on the sideline line and watches Daniel Jones now be 17 to 25 for 265 and two touchdowns. What's going through his head right I'll tell you now? exactly what it is. He's saying, how can I help Daniel Jones be better? You got to believe that at halftime, he went and sat right down with Daniel Jones and said, this is what I'm seeing. This is what you should try. He's the ultimate team guy. Pro of all pros. First down at 15. Jones pass incomplete. Look for Shepard. He was in this exact same position back in 2004. Yeah, exactly. He replaced a future Hall of Famer in, in Kurt Warner. He knows how this works. The difference is Kurt Warner didn't have the equity that Eli Manning has with the New York Giants. Kurt Warner was brought in because Kerry Collins did not want to be the developmental QB for Eli Manning. This is different. Daniel Jones is replacing a legend. Some ways it works though because their personalities are identical. Their mannerisms are identical. It's kind of uncanny. Second down at 15. Giants with two touchdowns here in the third quarter. Pulled to within three. That time Jones was hit as he got rid of the football. And again, just like the Jameis play earlier, nope. No called whistle but I'm pretty sure this one too was an incomplete and Shaq there. Wow. There was no whistle it's ruled Buccaneers football and all turnovers are reviewed. Look at that spin move. What do you think? Was yeah, the hand moving forward? I think the hand is moving forward. Yeah I mean it, even though he got hit before the ball the hand was going forward the ball never dislodged from his hand. And again we referred earlier to the Rams Saints game last weekend where the whistle was Previous blown. Previous play is under review. Whistle was blown on a similar play, which stopped the play. Should have been a recovery 
And a big return by Cam Jordan. They'll take a look at this one. Referee Bill Benedict gave us a great explanation. This is an incomplete pass. And just like earlier, give this crew a lot of credit for what they've been able to to do with this play it must have been an edict across the league to let these plays go and decide and replay and I think they made the absolute right decision our resident rules official Dean Blandino agreed and now we got third and 15 Daniel Jones got some work to do here must get to the 49 yard line for a first down if you joined us late Saquon Barkley injured in the second quarter ruled out for the remainder of this game. Giants 15 points here in the third quarter. Jones can't find anyone downfield. Looks to take off, but will go down at the 34-yard line. Tackled by Carl Nassib, forcing a Giants punt. Exact same cup as we saw earlier. The same cup as the Giants just played on their last third down. Too deep, man underneath. All these corners are playing underneath. They have safety help over the top. So nowhere for Daniel Jones to force this football. He has to hold on to it and watch this hit by Carl Nassim. Wow. He got walloped right there. Held on to the football. He gets the bucks off on third down. Bobo Wilson is deep. Forced all the way back to the 15-yard line. Ooh. And he will go nowhere. Time for a game break to Los Angeles. We go. Kurt Metafee. Kurt. Hey, what a day for Kyle Allen starting in place of the injured Cam Newton. He's got four touchdown passes, including two to Greg Olson. It doesn't hurt. Christian McCaffrey also has 175 total yards. And right now, they're cruising in Arizona, 35 to 20. Kenny Ronde and Tiki. Dare we say Cam who? Wow. <laughs> How about that score line? I mean, Kyle Cam, Cam's had some injury issues, but. Kyle Allen surprised people, I think. Another one of the young quarterbacks getting their opportunity. It's the way of the league right now. Buccaneers start from their 16-yard line and sporting through out to the 22 for a gain of six is Peyton Barber. With five and a half remaining in the third quarter. Jameis Winston with three touchdown passes in the first half. Ronald Jones. The leading rusher for the Bucks. Mike Evans, tremendous first half, has not caught a pass here in the third. I was just getting ready to mention that, Kenny. Where has Mike Evans been here in the second half of this football game? Obviously, they come out with the lead. They're a little more conservative, but they were making all their hay on that matchup up top. Let's see if they go back to it. Evans and Jenkins. Second down and four. This pass is nearly picked off. The ball is loose. But you can see it is ruled an incomplete pass. Well, they're trying to run this little slip screen behind the, uh, out the inside wide receiver. This is going to come in here. Really good play by Janoris Jenkins and Jabril Peppers. That ball was stuck in there, but he never had possession of that. So that is definitely an incompletion. Tough pass to complete, Rondé, and execute when everybody is pressed. And again, we mentioned this a little bit earlier in this quarter. Defensive coordinator James Betcher has been pressing these guys as opposed to leaving them off. Play clock at two, third down and four. Bucks need the 26-yard line. Winston to the outside for a first down to the tight end, Cameron Brink. That's his first catch today. Well, one way to combat that, Tiki, is to put your receivers in a bunch. Cornerbacks and the safeties can't get on the line of scrimmage. You got to play somewhat of a stack type coverage. And you can see Connolly's got the primary coverage on Cameron Bray. He's nowhere near that. So good play design. Way to set it up, pick up that four yards for the first down. Remember the Giants without linebacker Alec Ogletree. Injured in the first half. Peyton Barber takes it up the middle out to the 36-yard line. And again, the philosophy is a little bit different in the second half. You talk about no targets or catches from Mike Evans. They're running the ball a lot. They're not in a four-minute type situation here, but Byron Leftwich is definitely putting the pressure on the ground here. Second down and two. It's Barber. Peyton Barber picks up the first down, wrapped up by Antoine Bethay out of the 41. And he is so strong running the football. He's one of those guys where his pads are always leaning forward. I mean, if you need two yards, turn around and hand it to this guy. The offensive line has been really good the first couple of games, and the run 
offense. They call this smash or whatever it's the terminology is in their playbook, but it's a double team on the defensive tackle and just let your running back bang it in right. there. This is and, why you don't dance. And more importantly, Bruce Arians told us, look, it's only got to be four or five yard runs. They're not looking for those big explosives in this offense. From the 42, play action as Winston steps up. Nowhere to go. And down he goes, Dexter Lawrence, the rookie out of Clemson, first round pick with the giant sack. Well, the coverage is so much better in the second half of this football game. And again, we're seeing Jameis Winston just try to be patient with the ball. He doesn't want to force it. First game of the year, he had three interceptions, two of which were returned for touchdowns. So he's not going to be trigger happy, but the coverage is outstanding. Look at Jabril Peppers right there on Cam Braid, I think, where he was looking. And then just gives these defensive lineman of the Giants time to beat their blocks and get to the quarterback fourth Giants sack rookies have two another rookie Ryan Connolly guys now wearing the green dot as a timeout is taken by the Bucs he's now the communicator on defense Second in the absence timeout. of Alec Ogletree yeah, yeah and you could take advantage of that sometimes we'll be right back after this message from State Farm just mentioned the green dot and there it is you know the the Every team has one player on the field that can get the communications from defensive coordinator, in this case, James Betcher. And this is a lot to put on a rookie. He only start, he got his first start last week. And Tay, Tay Davis started week one, wasn't what they expected. Connolly came in and won the job. He's got better opportunities in the run game. But again, Tiki, you mentioned he could take advantage of the young play caller having to take on that responsibility of Alec Overton. Second down and 18. This play is blown dead. False start. False start. Offense number 69. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Right tackle, Demar Dotson. Well, that puts you in a bind. Second and 22. I mean, there's <laughs> not many plays that Byron Leftwich can go with to, to, to try to make this up. Essentially, you, you want to get half. I say it all the time. You yeah. want to get try to get half. Eight or nine make this somewhat manageable. But Doesn't everybody in the stadium know it's going to be a draw? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, T. I think they're going to throw this thing. Well, you're right. Screen. Draw screen. Looking down at 22 as Barber. Missed tackle. Was able to spin free away from Doris Jenkins and is out to the 35-yard line. Well, you're exactly right, T. The missed tackle is... Stays what was the, the, the end of this football play, but draws and screens. Every defender on the field right there was saying, draw, draw, screen, screen. And you could see that the Giants were very well prepared for it. And it's still third and 17 here for the Bucks. And Giants can get a stop here. That momentum, I think, is still in their favor. Giants defense has been better in the second half. They forced two punts, allowed scores on every possession in the first half. Third down and 17. Winston over the top, Magoon Bawale out to the 43, and he is tackled. So the Giants' defense able to get off the field once again, forcing a third straight Tampa Bay punt. Change of philosophy. Talk a little bit of mixing it up by Coach Betcher here. Sometimes they're pressed, sometimes they're off. A third and extraordinary long situation like that. You let them complete that one. Well, they're still working with what works still with this young defense and he told us I asked him what what's in is everything in he's like absolutely not we're nowhere near that point yet fair catch is called for by T.J. Jones at the 19 yard line so the Giants back on offense just over one minute remaining in the third quarter down by three without their star running back yeah Saquon Barkley Obviously, one of the catalyst four receptions he had on the day. Eight carries before he goes out. And in his stead, Wayne Gallman has filled in, but he's only carried the ball twice. So this Giants run game is sufficiently hampered without Saquon Barkley. But, it's being described as a foot injury. But I, you almost feel like Pat Shermer's okay with it right now. He, he, the, the confidence that his quarterback is showing right, right. now it's just it's impressive there's no no other word for it the way he's been able to handle the pressure being down in the game early and be able to show what he's shown is pretty awesome for the young guy off the fake to Goldman Jones in trouble down he goes it's Shaq Barrett again along with Carl Nassib the sack back at the six yard line well Carl Nassib pushes the pocket and then Shaq Barrett with his sixth sack 
on the season finish it. He's over here, but I want you to watch this pressure over here. This is where the initial deal comes from. Tight ends can't block defensive end. And then Shaq Barrett again with another great move, getting into the backfield and just plastering Daniel Jones. And this is, as you just mentioned, second and 22 for the Bucks, second and 21 here for the Giants. And you are way off schedule, especially backed up way in your own territory. On second down, the handoff to Goldman. William Golston brings him down. Jack Barrett with his second sack. He had three and one quarter last week. Earned him NFC Defensive Player of the Week honor, so he's only eight behind Ronde. <laughs> who won it nine times. Yeah, Ronde. <laughs> it is career. Better player for the Buccaneers, that's for sure. Bring Giants outscore the Bucs in the third. 15 nothing. Trail by three. Back in Tampa, Kenny Albert, Rave Barber, Tiki Barber, and Sarah Walsh. Giants with 15 points in the third quarter after they trailed at the half, 28-10. And Daniel Jones' first NFL start. Keep an eye on Shaq Barrett. He is heating up right now. Number 58 for the Bucs, third down and 15. Jones again under pressure. You called it, Rave. Can he be more excited? Wow. Can't block him. You cannot block him. He showed a spin move earlier. He just goes right through the block of Nate Solder here. That jump move through the outside leg of the offensive tackle is unstoppable. We saw it last week against Carolina. And the best thing that Shaq Barrett is showing me is the ability to finish. There's a lot of defensive ends that can push the pocket. Got to finish on the quarterback. He's done it three times again today. That was a Shaq hat trick. <laughs> Second consecutive three sack game for Barrett. Dixon punting from his end zone. Wilson from the 45. And he is met immediately by special team star pro bowler last season, Michael Thomas. Well, terrific battle here in Tampa, and in just six days, it's champ versus champ. Errol the Truth Spence Jr. takes on Showtime Sean Porter in a World Championship unification bout at Staples Center in Los Angeles, plus champion Anthony Durrell defends his title against David Benavides. Saturday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, live on pay-per-view order on the Fox Sports app. Penny, do your abs look like that? Holy cow. Those painted on? <laughs> Andre, there was 10 of them. <laughs> It's <laughs> 10 abs. You're talking to me, right there? <laughs> Winston on first down, going deep for Chris Godwin. No flags with DeAndre Baker defending. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say this is a good play. And I don't know if Bruce Harris is going to try to challenge this one. But what I like about Baker here, looking back for the football, this is a little out and up, trying to catch him unawares, but he is right in phase, and the best thing he does, look, Maybe even got away with the offensive PI P. as Goodwin tries to pull him to the ground here. Dallin's flag has been thrown from the other side. And, and Kenny, we've noticed this a lot. And we've talked, we've talked about it in our production meeting last night. New York is challenging the ruling on the field with regard to offensive pass interference. Timeout. So to make that point, I'll get it here real quick. A lot of these flags are non-calls that are getting turned into penalties. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. New York is charged with their first timeout and first challenge. Pat Shermer challenged for offensive pass interference. Steve Landino joins us from Los Angeles. Dean, what did you see? Yeah, I, I think Pat Shermer's upset, but I don't think this is a foul. I, they actually tangle feet. They're both playing the ball. There is some contact, but but that's not clear and obvious, and, and that's a good decision not to create that foul in replay. Finally, Dean, we agree. Right? I we love got it. it. This is this is on your on your entering the ring of fame. I want to agree <laughs> with you. <laughs> Thank you, man. I don't agree with either of you. <laughs> Well, that would have been a huge penalty. I mean, it, it would set them back to sec second and 25. And I, I hate that the intent of the rule gets somewhat twisted off that play. I mean, it's a good play by both players. We're just confirming the down and distance. 
Second down. It's a good play by both guys. You're going to fight for the ball down the football field. It's hanging in the air. They're both in good position looking for the football. So I, I, I don't I don't necessarily agree with even the challenge, but Bill Vinovich doing a great job down here on this field again. Second down and 10. Winston steps up and then dumps it off to Barber. But he is met immediately by Tay Davis in for the injured Alec Ogletree, third and long upcoming for the Bucks. Tay Davis is a guy, he's a converted safety, he's better in space as a coverage guy than as a first and second down run type defending linebacker. You got a, 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 a space for him, and with Alec Ogletree on the sideline, you got two very young linebackers out on the field. Bucks formation to the left side, top of your screen, third down and eight. Winston's pass is caught, and Godwin able to pick up the first down as Jenkins tried to impede his progress. Now, this is a big boy catch here. You're right, Rondé. He catches this one, gets hit immediately. You almost want to question Janoris Jenkins. He gets, knows that the ball has to come out quick because there's pressure coming off the edge. So close to the first down here. Great job. By Chris Godwin there the power and strength of Chris Godwin showing up there was a couple of crucial third down catches last week that Chris Godwin was involved in this kid is a rising superstar first and ten from the 40 it's Barber up the middle eight of five down to the Giants 35 yard line well this Bucks offense finally feels rhythmic you're getting positive runs on first and second down you're converting on third down you're taking shot opportunities I think By Byron left which is finding his groove right now he understands what the Giants are doing to him now and he's getting close to 400 yards of total offense today for this offense they scored on their first six possessions three touchdowns three field goals have punted on their last three Robert tried to cut to the outside, and then he's wrapped up. B.J. Hill makes the play. No gain. Third and five coming up for Tampa Bay. What's most impressive here, you guys, is that they're doing this without Mike Evans having a catch in the second half. Still at seven receptions. Big day already, 146 yards. But it's on the back of Peyton Barber. He's starting to get rack up on carries here. 12 for 48, a robust four yards of carry. Most importantly, Rondé, unlike... Jones was in there. He's banging it into the line of scrimmage. That's how big plays happen. Bang, 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 bang. Big play comes out of it. Big play coming up here. Third down and five. Play clock now at two. Winston steps up on third down. He throws it. It's picked off by Connolly. Ryan Connolly with the first interception by a New York Giant. First takeaway for this Giants defense in three games. And it's Marcus Golden with the pressure off the edge that forces this. This pocket is collapsing, and Jameis Winston reverts back to the intercepting ways. I want you to watch 44 all coming off the edge, running right through DeMar Dotson. And then this ball just can't come out here. Just puts it in danger. It's looking for, I think, Mike Evans and just badly over or under throws him, overthrows him here. And you don't get any easier than this. Yeah, it looked more like he was aiming that, Rondé. It's like at your golf shop. When you try to aim it somewhere, don't swing and trust your, your, your stroke. It's not going where you want it to go. So Ryan Connolly, who was a walk-on at Wisconsin, fifth-round pick by the Giants with his first NFL interception as Jones hands it off to Wayne Gallman in for the injured Saquon Barkley. Gallman out across the 40 with the Giants. Trailing by three, 11 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. And we got a good football game here. There is some serious hitting going on in the run game on both sides. And Wayne Gallman's not a guy that's going to power through this defensive line of the Bucks, but this one's going to be fun here. Ten minutes, ten and a half minutes left. Buckle up your chin straps. With Daniel Jones at the helm, he's passed for 265 yards, two touchdowns, ran for another. In his first NFL start, Jones hit, ball comes loose, and it is recovered by the Bucks. But again, the question is, was the arm moving forward? Well, the question, of course, Kenny and Tiki, is this empty hand. Shaq Barrett again with a great pressure. That's empty-handed. 
And that ball is not in his grasp, his possession, so to speak, before it comes forward. Watch it moving out of his hand before he throws it. Look, great defensive players. I said it before. They are ball aware when they're going at the quarterback. You can always, not always get a hit. That ball is a sack as well. And I think this is going to stay as a turnover for Tampa Bay. And Shaq Barrett, holy cow, man. Yeah. Are Nick, you kidding me right Nate now? Nate is having a tough time over there. On the left side of this Giants offensive line, it's also a clear recovery. Oh, look, he's giving them everything. Inside, outside moves. That one was a, a bull rush that he spun and threw him onto the ground and got to the quarterback. That is very impressive, Shaq Barrett. His fourth sack today. Jones down to the Giants, 37. Shaq Barrett ties a franchise record. Simeon Rice and Marcus Jones, the only other Tampa Bay Bucks with four sacks in one game. Well, they've been looking for a guy to do this for a long time here in Tampa. They go get JPP last year. He was that in that 4-3 defense. What JPP plays when he comes back here in this now 3-4 defense should be interesting, but he's got some competition on that side now with Shaq. Second down at five. Jones up the middle, breaks free. Has a first down to the Giants 24 yard line. The compliment of back, Siki. Talk, yeah. talk about it. Having two guys that can one bang and then one that can be explosive like Ronald Jones. Yeah, and again, running the ball is cumulative. Yes, yeah, so you, you can have it on one guy and can bang, 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 and then go, but it, it's the guys up front that are getting this done Look at for the blocks. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're sticking on these blocks, and some of it's because the Giants' defense getting worn down. They had an emotional lift of that turnover just a few minutes ago, but. Now they're right back on the field. It's tough. First and 10, 24-yard line. It's Jones again. Upended. Comes down at the 18-yard line. Well, let's continue to talk about Ronald Jones. The redemption year that he is having. Last year as a rookie, he only had like 23 carries. But just like in week one, when it comes to crunch time, turn around, hand the ball off to this big, explosive monster of a runner. And right now, Tiki, Tay Davis is shaken up on the field for New York and they're running out of bodies at the position. Already lost Alec Ogletree earlier. So Davis heads to the sidelines. Javril Peppers made that last hit on Ronald Jones catapulting Jones up in the air. There's Ogletree one of the Giants captains and now Davis to the sidelines as well. Well the fact that they're paying that much attention to him right off the field is is troubling. I think they only have one other linebacker up. David Mayo, correct? He's in the game, number He's 55. Game, right. Second down and three. There's Jones again. They keep feeding him. Has a first down. And we head to Los Angeles for a game break. Kurt. Well, another kid making his first start looking good today. Mason Rudolph. 39 yard touchdown pass to the rookie Deontay Johnson. His second of the game. Fourth lead change between the Steelers and Niners. Right now, it's Pittsburgh up by three. Kenny Ronde and Tiki. And Ronde, we were in Pittsburgh last week. Mason Rudolph, impressive in relief of the injured Ben Roethlisberger. He was. I think the kid might have a shot here, depending on what happens with Big Ben going forward. First and 10 from the Giants' 13-yard line. It's Jones inside the 10. And down to the seven. Well, Tiki can probably explain this better than me, but just the patience of Ronald Jones here. We talked about him wanting to be a bounce runner. Here he just sticks his foot to the ground and uses that big frame to pick up three or four yards here. Yeah, look, this is a counter. It gets the defense off center. You get him thinking one way, you come back the other way. It's all about footwork and patience and knowing where your lead blocker is, is going. It's pretty good ball security there. It is floating around a little bit. You always got to go to the ground with two hands on the ball. High and tight, right, Tiki? High and tight. Tiki Barber would know that. Second down and four. It's Jones again. And you just love the demeanor of the play caller right now. What is working? Ride the hot hand. Not only that, Rondé, you know that the Giants are thin at linebacker right now. Tay Davis did not even go in the tent. He had it straight for the locker room. So we'll, we'll see how that affects this rotation on the Giants' defense side of the well, ball. Last week, Byron Leftwich kept Peyton Barber in the game and just let him bludgeon, bludgeon uh, Carolina. Now it's Ronald Jones. Barber's back in the football game. Now he's a little bit stouter of a player. See if they continue to run this football. That was six straight carries for Ronald Jones. Third down and two. It is Barber, and he will not get there. 
Dalvin Tomlinson along with Ryan Connolly. Make the stop. Well, they knew exactly where this was coming. Just, just, this guys are going to try to block this way. He's going to try to cut back in there. But Connolly again, we talked about his winning the linebacker job in week two is because of this. His ability to scrape, make tackles. And that's a big stop for this Giants defense on a Bucks offense that was driving down the field running the football. So they keep the Bucks out of the end zone. 23 yard attempt. Matt Gay from the left hash. Buccaneers have not scored here in the second half. They now lead the Giants by six with six minutes remaining here in Tampa. Welcome back, Kenny Albert, Rodney Barber, Tiki Barber, Sarah Wall. Six minutes remaining. Giants will get the ball back. They trail the Buccaneers by six. What better situation would you want to be in if you're Pat Shermer with your young quarterback, having to win a game on the road, you're 0-2, and Daniel Jones, with what he's shown today, has been impressive. He has some ball security issues, two fumbles on the day. But it's been the story of the week. The backup quarterbacks in the NFL. There's a youth movement for sure. Mason Rudolph, we saw him last week. He's showing out again today. Kyle Allen is just balling for Carolina today. And <laughs> this guy, how about that guy? Gardner Minshew. He might be my favorite one. Jackson Dash. Jacoby Brissett, who kind of wasn't a backup at the start of the season because Andrew Luck's retirement. But going into this offseason, he was not the starter. He's actually done really well. Last two games, he's found a way to get the Indianapolis Colts some wins and keep them afloat. And that's exactly what Daniel Jones is trying to do here for his New York Giants. Who trail by six. First and 10, 25-yard line. Gallman in the backfield. Gallman now to the 27, gain of two. Well, a touchdown wins the football game, so I think you, you try to be patient. Pat Shermer run the ball, eat some of this clock, still try to convert third downs and I know you keep talking take pressure off of this young Daniel Jones at some point here he's gonna have to deliver the ball down the field but it in doing that he's got to watch out for Shaq Barrett he's got four sacks on the day second down and eight Jones throws, and it's complete to the tight end, Rhett Ellison, out of the 30, third down and five. So the man Jones replaced Eli Manning, 37 career game-winning drives to rally the Giants from a fourth-quarter deficit or tie to win the game. Five more in the postseason. You may remember a couple of those against New England. Yeah, you're right, and that's why Eli is legendary in a lot of Giants people, a lot of Giants fans' minds. When it mattered, when it was crunch time, he always came through. Daniel Jones has likely learned a lot from Eli in that regard. You would hope he's going to need it here. Big third down. Third down and five. Giants must get to the 35. Here comes Barrett. Jones gets rid of it. Diving attempt to try and break it up made by Carlton Davis. Pass intended for Russell Shepard incomplete. Well, Giants will punt. Jack Barrett was so fast off the line of scrimmage. It almost looked like he was off sides. But I think he just timed this perfectly. His none, No part of his body was past that ball. Look, he's looking for the flag. <laughs> Woo, he got away with it. And Carlton Davis with the pass defense on the other side. Good job by this Bucks defense. They needed to get off the field there. But now... The Giants are going to win this football game. Their defense is going to need to step up and get a stop here. Field goal will likely win the football game for Tampa. Giants offense after they scored the two touchdowns. Since then, they have not picked up a first down. Four possessions. This is Bobo Wilson. Wilson tackled at the 22-yard line by Cody Core. Mike Evans, three first half touchdowns. Well, he was on fire to start this football game. Has not yet caught a pass in the second half, but he was the catalyst for this offense to start this football game. Everything was gold between Jameis and Mike Evans. The Giants, to their credit, have adjusted since then and have taken him out of this football game. But right now, you are in that four-minute structure on offense if you're Tampa. The most important thing is what? Protect the football. Ronald Jones in the backfield. Buck Stark from the 22. This is Jones up the middle. 
out to the 29-yard line for a gain of seven. He's so unique how he runs, Ronald Jones, especially once he gets to contact. It's almost like he's trying to step over you after, after he gets uh, into, your, into his gut. Uh, he's, he's become a really good, strong runner. And there are the numbers for Mike Evans. Nothing here in the second half. And he's been targeted. He's just been covered well, covered differently, I guess you should say. And look, Janoris Jenkins had a tough day early in his football game, but right now, none of that matters. They need to stop on defense. Second down and two. It's Jones, and the Giants get the stop on that play. Giants with two timeouts remaining, three and a half on the clock, trailing by six, and they will use a timeout here. Remember, they lost a timeout with the challenge. Pat Shermer went for the offensive pass interference. It was not overturned, so they're down to one, and that will play a part. Look, situational football is how you win in the National Football League. One of the most important situations is four-minute offense. As Rondé mentioned, do not turn the ball over. High and tight if your runners go to the ground with both arms around the, around the ball, and then most importantly for Jameis Winston, don't try to be the hero here. Yeah, and if you and, don't get the first down, punt it away. And don't the, try to do something spectacular. And to turn that around to the other side of the foot, football with this Giants defense, you got you have to get off the field. A first down here allows the Bucks just to eat so much time. So third and four, what do you what do you expect? Quick pass to the flat. If it's not there, James Winston probably eats it, takes the sack, and they punt it away and puts their defense back on the field. But this is the most important play of the game for this Giants defense if they're going to try to get a win today. Each team with one timeout remaining. Great shifts into the backfield. Third down and three. This is great. And a terrific tackle is made by Michael Thomas. Great tackle, Kenny. Absolutely the tackle you had to make. This thing looked a little bit open with some room to run. Michael Thomas is the sub safety. He comes in on a lot of dime type situations in the football game, and that's a good open field tackle on a big tight end by Thomas. I got to tell you, Ronnie, that's a really good play design by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You bring the fullback into the backfield. You flood the zone here. You think he's there in the, the block. He free releases. So great recognition by the Giants here in secondary to get up and make a great play. So Daniel Jones will get another opportunity. T.J. Jones is back deep for the Giants. Giants have used their final timeout. 324 remaining, trailing by six. First Giant guys with two touchdown passes in his first NFL start since Scott Bruner. Wow. In Seattle back in wow. December of 1980. It's quite an accomplishment. And he also ran for another chatting with Eli Manning. Now he's going to get an opportunity. And you can, you've got to believe that Eli is telling him what to think. Yeah. How to execute, I was what just not to, to do, etc., etc., etc. I was just going to ask, what is he telling him right now? That, that, that information invaluable. Daniel Jones was seven when Eli made his first start in 2004. Fair catch, 25-yard line. Giants offense well, back Dan on the field. Well, Daniel Jones started out well. There was no pressure. He looked calm, comf comfortable, running out of the pocket. But then in the second half, Todd Cole started lighting him up. And that was mainly because of this guy, Shaq Barrett. Nate Solder over there working on him one-on-one. -on -one. Look at these moves. They're all over the place. Just pretty rushes all day long. Actually, for two weeks long for Shaq Barrett. He's got a chance here to get after this young quarterback once again. And if you're Daniel Jones, the emotions can't this cannot be too big a situation for you. I think he can handle it. Let's see what he has here. Yeah, from everything we've heard, Rondé, he doesn't get rattled by any situation. No first downs, last four possessions for the Giants. They empty the backfield on first down from their 25. Jones to the outside, complete Sterling Shepard. Gain of five to the 30, MJ Stewart, the tackle. Good tackle there by MJ Stewart in the flat. And look, your Giants offense now, you're in two-minute mode. I know there's three minutes left. Get in the rhythm. Get some first downs. Change the field here. Give yourself a chance for a touchdown at the end. Giants trail by 18 at the half. Two third-quarter touchdowns. Now a six-point game. Jones on second down. Fires, and it's caught. What a catch by the rookie Slayton. What a throw by the rookie Jones. <laughs> Under pressure again here, but he gets the ball just where it needs to be. 
And Slayton climbs a ladder to grab that one. I would have preferred him step out of bounds, but there's still enough time that it's not that big of an issue yet. 21 yards. He had a 46-yard reception earlier. Across midfield from the Bucks, 49. Jones to the outside. It is Evan Ingram who makes the catch. Got two feet down. And then got out of bounds, most importantly. And look, the Bucks are, I talked earlier about being in those chunk or challenge situations. The Bucks are in the chunk situation now. They're going to allow these plays to be caught in front of them. You do not want a ball to go over the top of the defense at all. Just come up and make tackles. Try to keep them in bound. And look, Daniel Jones has to understand that. He knows there's no timeouts left. Two minutes, 15 seconds on the clock. A lot of these plays should go to the sideline where his receivers can get out of bounds. I spoke to a Giants coach on the field before the game. He was asked about the quarterbacks, Eli and Daniel Jones. He said, if you've loved the last 15 years, if you're a Giants fan, you'll love the next 15. And you're, you're looking at why. On second down, Jones to a wide open Sterling Shepard inside the 20. Still going, finally brought down at the 12-yard line, and this will take us to the two-minute warning here in Tampa. A 36-yard catch and run, and Daniel Jones is over 300 yards in his first NFL start. With Sterling Shepard so open, they're playing quarters coverage. Look at the corner and the safety. They are responsible for the vertical release of one and two. When they get on top of each other, these two guys have to pass it off, but they're so confused by the route and the depth that Sterling Shepard takes it up the field that nobody is there. Great play design by Pat Shermer. Great execution by Sterling Shepard and a perfect throw by Daniel Jones to get them down here right outside the 10-yard line. Two minutes remaining. Bucks lead by six. First and 10 from the Tampa Bay 12. Jones on first down, complete to Betty Fowler. Carlton Davis unable to bring him down. He's finally ruled in possession of Davis at the seven. Well, now if you're the Giants, how do you play it now? You, you got a minute and 43 seconds on the clock. You want to eat as much of this as possible. You don't want to give Tampa a chance. Still have to score a touchdown, though. Second down at five. Jones to the outside. That pass intended for Evan Ingram with MJ Stewart defending. Good coverage by MJ Stewart. That's a tough matchup. Nickelback versus tight end slash wide receiver. And you can tell Daniel Jones is trying to go to the sideline to protect the clock. The incompletion does not hurt them here, though. You gotta imagine, you know that they're in four down territory. Giants need a touchdown. Third down and five. Jones on third down. He throws, and it's broken up. Again, looking for Ingram. Great play by Levante David. Great play. Underneath coverage, you've got to understand that Evan Ingram is his number one target. We haven't talked much about Levante, but he is their best player on defense in coverage. Trying to run a little rub pick route. That is just fantastic. He plays the ball, does not affect the receiver. Sets up a fourth down here. All on the line right here. It comes down to this play. Giants out of timeouts. A minute 21 on the clock, fourth down. They can pick up a first. Couldn't have been scripted any better, Kenny. They can pick up a first down at the two. On fourth and five, Jones steps up, takes off, he's in, touchdown! That's the danger of a running quarterback. If you're going to play man-to-man -man defense and every single buck defender has his back to the quarterback, nobody's going to be right here. Watch all these defenders turn their back to Daniel Jones. They're all looking at their assignment. The rush integrity is voided. Easy touchdown. Second rushing touchdown for Daniel Jones. And they are in position to win a football game with their rookie quarterback. The extra point is good. The New York Giants have their first lead in this game. How about that by Daniel Jones, too? He recognized that right away. So, as Rondé was mentioning, everybody turns their back, running to double coverages. He sees a void, 
He, he's not one that's scared to go get hit and run. What an unbelievable comeback. Couldn't agree more by this Giants team. Remember the halftime is 28 to 10. Just watch all these guys. All, all of these defenders turn their back away from Daniel Jones. They're trying to double the bunch of receivers down here. You've got to sort these guys. And again, you're right. It's a stack. Yeah, stack. Stack gets you thinking too much. Pat Shermer told us yesterday one of the reasons he made the change to Daniel Jones came after watching, quote, so many young quarterbacks around the league doing heroic things. And this is what he means by heroic things, whether it's Lamar Jackson, and he's an elite runner, but Lamar Jackson taking off and running with the football, or Kyler Murray, who was drafted specifically for his running ability and that offense out in, in Arizona. Daniel Jones is a, th a dual threat player. He's accounted for four touchdowns today. He's thrown for two. He's run for two touchdowns. 23 of 36, 336 yards. And now with a minute 16 remaining, the Bucks trailing for the first time today. Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay offense back out on the field. And the stage is set for Jameis Winston at home. You've got to love this situation if you're him. Look, the Giants should be in a challenge situation on defense because they cannot give up a field goal. We saw that in the New Orleans game last week. They gave up some big plays and got down and able to kick the field goal to win. See if Mike Evans gets re-involved in this offense. Winston on first down. Gets away from pressure. Being chased. He's hit. And down he goes. Lorenzo Carter able to make the tackle after Winston Got back to the line of scrimmage. And Jameis almost got sacked twice and almost lost the ball on that swipe by Carter. Bucks have one timeout remaining. They need a field goal. Under one minute on the clock. As Winston throws. And this is Chris Godwin who makes the play for a Tampa Bay first down out of the 47. And the Bucks hurry back up to the line. 35 seconds and now. Well, two minutes. The play is blown dead. Previous play is under review. This will be a booth review under two minutes remaining. Well, the ball's a little bit underthrown. Chris Godwin had beaten his defender. See if he gets underneath. That's a catch. That's yeah, that's a, a catch. catch. That's definitely a catch. It's allowed to touch the ground, of course, but he had control of that ball before any part of that ball touched the ground. Man, what a game. <laughs> Holy cow. This is fun. Yeah, you, you, you love football? You couldn't have scripted this right? one any better, dude. You, you love football? This is football. Two teams that a lot of people have questions about coming into this season. One fighting for their first win. Jameis Winston still trying to prove himself to Bruce Arians and Byron Leftwich as their franchise quarterback. He's got an opportunity right now to put them in a game-winning situation. And remember, they have a rookie quarterback. The or, I'm sorry, a rookie kicker in Matt Gay, the Bucks do. And he's got a big leg, Kenny. He also After missed. reviewing the play, running on the field is confirmed. Complete a pass. First Matt down. Gay missed two extra points earlier. That one blocked, and the Buccaneers trail by a point. So it's a catch by Godwin. There's Matt Gay, the rookie kicker. He hit from 52 yards earlier today. Well, that review helped them. It gave them time here. He didn't have to take that time out. They still have the one remaining. The clock will start at ready to play when the official backs out. There it goes. Winston looking for Evans. He makes the catch. Mike Evans with his first reception of the second half, and it's a huge play for the Buccaneers. How does that happen? I'm about to show you. It's Mike Evans being Mike Evans here. He has been dominating Janoris Jenkins all day long, and watch this route. He beats him at the line of scrimmage. He doesn't have the speed to catch up. The ball is perfectly weighted down the football field. Sure-handed catch by Mike Evans. And his day just got a lot brighter. Wow, 44 yards. His eighth catch. 190 yards today for Evans. Three touchdowns all in the first half. You cannot blame James Betcher for trying to put your number one corner on their number one receiver. But as we've seen all day today, the matchup is favoring heavily this stud wide receiver, Mike Evans. And with this timeout. Game. Offense. Five yard penalty. 
still first down. And with this timeout, they can afford to put the ball in the position where Matt Gay is most comfortable. Turn around, hand this ball off, and see if your rookie kicker can win a football game. Yeah, the thing you also talked about, Rondé, said earlier, if you try to jam at the line of scrimmage, you miss, you are in trouble. This ball could have been outside Jameis Winston. Let's throw. He put it down on the inside shoulder of Mike Evans. Winston takes a knee. Go back to Matt Gay. He had one miss early in the game. Snap hold is perfect. He just yanked it. Second one, the rookie Lawrence. Dominates inside. Block. The Bucks let the clock run down after that last play. To three seconds. Ball timeout. And now an opportunity for a game-winning field goal. And if you're the Bucks here, you have new mechanisms all the way through. New snapper and trainer, new holder in pinion, new kicker in Matt Gay. But a good coach will tell you, you cannot let circumstance in this game dictate your behavior. Go out and execute, make the kick, win the football game. He's four for four today. Missed the two extra points. Rookie fifth round pick out of Utah. New kicker for the Bucks for the eighth straight season. That's an unreal stat. 34 yard attempt for the win. Matt Gay's kick is. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Look at Saquon. He's looking to join the celebration. Absolutely he is. Daniel Jones on the road. First game of his professional career. Ends up with 336 yards passing. Touchdown run to end. Again, the execution is fine. Matt Gay, pressure got to him. And they missed. The kicking woes in Tampa continue again. Giants have lost a number of games over the past few seasons on last second field goals. The tide turns here in Tampa as Matt Gay could not connect from 34 yards out. Pat Shermer and the Giants celebrate. They come back from an 18 point deficit at halftime. A congratulatory high five from Eli Manning as Daniel Jones leads the comeback in his first NFL start. Back in a moment.